Hey guys, I see a lot of players new to Advance asking, what sets should I be running on my Pokemon? What sets should I be expecting from other Pokemon? So I decided to put together this video that goes over all the move sets and also importantly EV spreads, which a lot of newer players are often lost on, because it's not always easy to find those. I know there are a ton of resources out there, replays, teams people have used, sets people have used and whatnot, but it's hard to find a definitive picture of what a Pokemon likes to run. Uh, some people have been working on revamping the on-site Smogan analyses, me among them, but you know that's a long process, so I figured I would just try to tackle every seen Pokemon in Advance OU. Uh, in this video, so you have an idea of what sets to use on your teams. It's not going to be a super in-depth explanation of every single set and every single Pokemon, but you know we'll go over the moves and the EVs and generally what the Pokemon's role is and or what the set's role is as well. And I hope that gives you a bigger, a, a better picture of what gets used and uh, you can put it on your teams and you can be more aware of it. Uh, when you are uh, facing others. So I we're going by a viability ranking. So I left off, I mean we go pretty in depth, I left off some real junk uh, at the end because I was getting tired, <laughs> but uh, we go pretty in depth even into the lesser used Pokemon, so uh, we'll sweep over the ones I didn't put in the team builder at the end. Uh, real quick, but they deserve less attention, and this is long as is. So, as always, we're going to start with the king himself, Tyranitar. So, let's go! Uh, this set, the Dragon Dance Titar, it is the number one sweeper in advance, or at least the most feared, because you absolutely have to have a check to it. You cannot lose as soon as Titar clicks Dragon Dance. And you might think, well, how hard can that be? And it's easier to happen if you're not thinking about it than you might think so uh, pack a check to it so the standard spread is jolly because you want to be outrunning starmie after a dd that's huge because a lot of dd tar teams are super weak to starmie so as nice as adamant's power would be then you just can't do it you'll also outrun some slower dug trios like adamant or especially defensive sets and uh, you will also outrun any Gengar after a DD, meaning that alongside the Lumberry, it cannot Will-O-Wisp you to check you. Uh, so, and of course, you'll be outrunning base 100s after a dance. The Lumberry is really crucial. Status is everywhere, and for Pokemon that can't really hurt Titar, like Zapdos, Moltres, Gengar, Blissey, uh, Jirachi, then a lot of them will try to slow it down with status. With Lumberry, you remove it. You know, uh, in the old days, the DD Tar ran leftovers and a bunch of bulk to try to get two dances, but that metagame is long in the past, so now pretty much every DD Tar is fast with Lum. That's what you have to expect, that's what you should be using. I'm not saying you couldn't use lefties with a lot of bulk if your team required it, but by and large, on a lot more teams than not, then Jolly fast it, with Lum is going to be the answer. As for the last move, DD, Rock Slide, EQ, you need those. Then HP Bug is the standard because it destroys Starmie, destroys Claydol, destroys Celebi. Those are big targets. Of course, HP Grass is also an option because Swampert is really nasty. And this way you can mess with it really hard. If Swampert's their only DD Tar check and you have HP Grass on your DD Tar, that's really nice. However, giving up the coverage on Starmie, Celebi, and Claydol can really, really suck. Another option is Ice Beam, if your team is really afraid of Flygon. It also means that Salamence can't Intimidate stall you, which is nicer than you would think. Because you think, oh, I'll just Rock Slide it, and then some good switching, and uh-oh, you can't kill it anymore. But with, uh, with Ice Beam, that's not a problem. And you also Chunk Clade all decently. So, uh, those are the main options. You know, in the old days with Lefties and Bulk, then Taunt was also possible. Nowadays, I don't think it's really worth it. Because Skarmory's not really a great T-Tar counter, so... Uh, that's mostly what you should be using. There are other options like Double Edge, which has great coverage against things like Flygon and hits uh, Starmie harder than Rock Slide. Uh, hits neutral targets harder than Rock Slide in general, I should say. And some players like that because it's the strongest move, besides Hyper Beam, I guess, against Swampert. Strongest physical move, of course. And uh, they pair it with Leechy Berry, so that's also a nice option. So you can do that. 
Eevees aren't going to change a slap double edge over HP bug and slap a lychee berry over lum. And, you know, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, oh, and one other thing is that Salig berry with Endure in the last slot is really nice. Because that way, if you dance as something faster comes in, like Dugtrio or Aerodactyl that's going to KO you, you can just Endure. Uh, the Salic will give you the second speed boost you need, and then you will outrun everything and probably sweep. So, uh, that's... Yeah, th that's everything. Lum, Lychee, Salic, HP Bug Standard, HP Grass, Ice Beam, Double Edge with Lychee, and Endure with Salic. So, uh, yeah, I realize this video is long, and you're going to have to pay attention if you want to get all the information, but, you know, I think that's a good thing. Because if you're, uh, trying to improve, then... Well, yeah, all the information is here. Anyway, so next up, Fizz T-Tar. Four attacks T-Tar. I didn't want to call it four attacks necessarily because there's another four attack T-Tar, but generally, if you see someone say four attack T-Tar, they're referring to this. And if you see them, uh, say Fizz Tar, then they're also referring to this. Uh, so... This video also will help with terminology some players use uh, s when referring to sets commonly used. So, yeah, that's those two terms refer to this set. It's just a... Uh, so, whereas Dragon Dance T-Tar, in terms of playing it, you don't want to switch it into too many attacks because you want it to be healthy to actually get a DD and uh, or take a hit while trying to sweep. But with uh, the Fizz Tar, then, also known as BKC Tar, actually. I was trying to be humble, but then I realized some, a lot of people do refer to it as BKC Tar. Uh, because I paid them to. No, seriously, they do, do, they do do that. And if they say BKC Tar, they're also referring to this set. So, yeah, this set is the opposite of DD because it switches into a lot of stuff. It chases out a lot of stuff. You know, your Snorlaxes, your Blissies, your Zapdoses. And it chunks pretty much everything nicely because Focus Punch is... Uh, Okay, I guess Focus Punch is on par with Hyper Beam as strong as Physical Attack, but... And DD Focus Punch is possible, but, you know, try not to get overwhelmed if I mention every fringe detail. You know, stick with the standards. I'm gonna mention the alternatives on each set, but, you know, don't be... God, this is loud. Uh, yeah, but don't be, uh... Try... If you have a question, you can always ask, of course, uh, in the comments or on Discord, but... I want to stress that while I do want to mention all the options a Pokemon might have because I don't want to leave stuff out, I want this to be as educational as possible, I also don't want to overwhelm people by thinking, oh, well, T-Tar can run Double Edge and HP Bug, and so, uh, you know, I mentioned the fringe options if you want to try them out, but generally you're going to be seeing HP Bug or HP Grass on DD-Tar. You know, Lychee Double Edge is very, very, very rare. So, Lum, HP Bugger Grass is the standard on DD Tar. Uh, so, yeah, this is the Fizz Tar. It switches into stuff. Use these IVs. Uh, and it tanks pretty much everything. Max HP T Tar tanks plus one Salamence Earthquake and unboosted Metagross Meteor Mash. And uh, responds nicely in return. So, it's a good backup check to DD Mence, DD Gera. Opposing DD Tar. Uh, bullies the hell out of Curse Lax and Blissey, and chunks everything nicely. Uh, HP Bug is nice, so you immediately threaten Offensive Celebi one-on-one. -on -one. And of course, it uh, doesn't let you get walled by Clay at all. That said, HP Bug is kind of expected on this set, so some players have toyed with HP Grass, which is a good option. It's like on the Sub Punch set from back in the day, which I will also mention in a second. But uh, generally, HP Bug is a lot safer. Uh, so speaking of Sub Punch, this set is basically the old Sub Punch set with Earthquake over Sub. So if you put Sub here over EQ, then you have a good set. Uh, problem is, oh, you just have to make sure you, if you put on Sub, then you have to give it 252 uh, HP. So you get 101 Subs, so your substitute survives a Seismic Toss from Blissey. That said, I love Earthquake because I don't like being walled by Metagross, and I like being able to actually damage Jirachi immediately as well as opposing T-Tar, so uh, I think this set is generally more applicable. It's basically like Sub, except you have to be a little more predict-savvy with your Focus Punch. But I don't think that's too much to ask, and the rewards are monstrous, so that's the Fizz-Tar. 
Here's Pursuit Tar. I left the last two moves blank because they can really be anything. We'll get to that in a second, but uh, Fizz, uh, Pursuit Tar is used often on Spike's teams because those teams really, really hate Gengar. A lot of teams hate Gengar. Offense can use Pursuit Tar too, but uh, it's commonly on Spike's teams, and it absorbs a Will-O-Wisp and uses special attack, so it doesn't really mind. And it doesn't mind absorbing the Will-O-Wisp because it's taking Gengar down as well with Pursuit. So... Uh, you won't bulk, so you're careful against uh, Gengar, you know, tr staying in and attacking you. You have Crunch to really force the issue. If Gengar, you know, wants to stay in and, you know, try to chip you down, then you can Crunch them. And, yeah, Pursuit Tar is pretty simple. Gengar, Claydol, you know, sometimes you can mess with certain variants of Celebi. And, uh, yeah, so options for last slot are Fire Blast, HP Grass. Ice Beam is really good because it lets you check Salamence. And it also kills Dugtrio in a one-on-one, -on -one, so that's really nice. Uh, what else is good? Roar. I, I think Roar is really good because you can roar against an unrevealed team and potentially drag in a Gengar, so you force it into the one-on-one -on -one and trap it before it's ready, as opposed to switching into the Will-O-Wisp, which is really nice. So, uh, generally you want to avoid physical attacks on this tar because its primary purpose is to take burns. From Gengar, but you also can use physical attacks on Tar, like EQ and Brick Break are good. Brick Break because it uh, two it KOs any T Tar, so it can't DD twice, uh, which is a good benchmark to have. Roar is also good for that purpose, but Brick Break actually hurts it and can touch Blissey, and you know you're also useful in the event that you don't face a Gengar. You have the physical options, so uh, yeah, Fire Blast, Ice Beam, HP Grass, Brick Break, Roar. Uh, some people like Counter, which is pretty nice, and Protect, which is also good for scouting Choice Bandit attacks from Metagross and Salamence, and Opposing Tar, and you get lefties to get out of range of Dugtrio, so that's another great option. And it really is team dependent. Uh, if you are a new, really new player and you really are not sure, I would say if you have a Magneton, then use Ice Beam and Roar, and if if you have a Magneton Spikes, use Ice Beam and Roar. If you have a Magneton with no Spikes and it's just Offense, use Ice Beam and HP Grass. And if you don't have uh, Spikes, then use... Or if you don't have a Magneton, then use Fire Blast. So, uh, those are the rules of thumb. Moving on, Mix Set, the UD Tar, because he did come up with this. So, this is pretty much a Mix Men set, but on a T-Tar. And it's got a ton of coverage with max special attack, you smack Swampert, Fire Blast, Roast, Skarmory, and Metagross, and uh, Fortress. Hits Jirachi really hard. And generally great coverage for like Celebi as well. Although you're not going to be beating Calm Mind Celebi with this T-Tar variant, but that's not really what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to break open a lot of teams because it hits everything really hard with its special attacks and the big special sponge, Blissey, then you have Brick Break for that as well as Lum so it's not immediately ruined by status and you're constantly forcing Soft Boiled and that can be taken advantage of and so on and so forth. So uh, yeah, the set is really straightforward, really easy to use, and really nasty. Alternatives include Lefties over Lum, Salig Berry over Lum, so let's say you're switching into Zapdos Thunderbolts and you get down to low HP, whoops, now you have Salak, now you can hit it still. Uh, you can also run a not hasty nature if you want to take Thunderbolts a little better. Uh, naive, or not going minus defense lets you live things like uh, Salamence Brick Break more easily, but you know, either's fine. And you can also go plus special attack if you want to hit harder. I personally really like that, but the speed is admittedly really nice for Endeavor Swamper. However, I still think plus special attack is nice. So... There's that, whoops, and uh, then there's the alternative of, excuse me, Rock Slide over Ice Beam, which is worse against Intimidated Ments and Flygon, but, you know, hit Zapdos harder, and Arrow, uh, Oko's Arrow, the Zapdos one is the bigger one, and it's generally nice to have a stab attack as well. And, uh, yeah, you can also try Focus Punch over Brick Break if you want extra muscle against Blissey, that's just getting in your way. Generally, if you're running Rock Slide, you will run Focus Punch as well. Because you can Rock Slide against Blissey, and then when you think it focus, it's going to Soft Boil, then you can Focus Punch. Whereas, if your only physical attack is Focus Punch, then you can't actually damage the Blissey at full health. So, uh, there's that. 
And finally, my personal favorite, Choice Band. Now, you don't want to face a bunch of Protect stuff with this set, but you're always going to get it in on a special sponge, and no matter what their physical wall is, you smack it. Focus Punch hits incredibly hard, smack Swampert, smack Skarmory, uh, you HP Bug Claydol, you HP Bug Claydol really hard, in fact, and you are just a massive immediate threat. You know, Blissey doesn't want to stay in and scout your move because CB Rock Slide really, really hurts it. So, a uh, good set, straightforward set, and just max, uh, I mean, so you could run Jolly, but I don't think you should. Uh, and you could run Bulk, I would be okay with that too, but I think that max speed is really nice because you outrun Offensive Swamper, so. That is Choice Bantar, alright, moving on. Metagross, CB Gross, simple, you want I have a video dedicated to the fourth move on CB Gross, and uh, I have just uh, gone over that one so much that I'm not going to go into it here, so. Rock Slide, Double Edge, Brick Break, HP Bug, whatever you like. Uh, you can go check out that video for more. As for the uh, EVs, you can run Jolly, but without Adamant, your explosion no longer Oko Skarmory, and that is a lot of... That is the way a lot of people like to run CV meta. Just immediately boom it, and either take out a Water or a Skarmory. And that way you've opened up a huge hole no matter what against defense. So, generally Adamant is nice. Uh, you gotta be careful of trappers, but it's a great set overall. Meteor Mash is nasty. Uh, leading off with Earthquake is nice because it means Magneton can't check to see if you're Banded Mash or not, and you hit, uh, what's it called, uh, Waters a lot harder than Mash. So if you're facing a T-Tar, consider EQ. Of course, Rock Slide is nice for Zapdos, but generally Mash, EQ, boom. Metagross could just run those three moves and be fine. So. Uh, there's that. Here's the tank set, which uh, has some EVs left over. This attack stat kills Bulkless Dugtrio with Earthquake, so you don't have to risk um, Meteor Mash accuracy. And this defense with HP always lives Adamant Dugtrio. So, but this set is flexible. You know, you can add more defense, you can add more attack, you can add more special defense. And uh, the last move slot, either Protect which is really nice for gaining lefties, uh, especially left uh, protecting out of Dugtrio range. And uh, I have a video called The Power of Protect for a reason. And then uh, there's, of course, Rock Slide, which is nice for unsuspecting Moltres switch-ins, as well as being better against Zapdos. So, uh, Moltres and Charizard, I should say. So, either of those are fine. You know, in the olden days, then HP Grass was the standard on this set, but... Uh, everything works. And if you're running Protect, then you can consider using this as a Swampert-esque physical wall. So, I would recommend a lot more defense investment. I like uh, this spread because this always Oko's Bulkless T-Tar after either a layer of Spikes or after one hit of Leech Seed. But you can- I've also used a lot of Impish because it becomes incredibly tanky on the physical side and it's still got a great attack stat with zero investment whatsoever, so that's fine. And yeah, so this is just a physical tank. It's like a Swamper because it checks physical T-Tar and Arrow really well and you know, checks Ments. I mean, it doesn't check Ments as well, but you can... Uh, what's the business place term? Uh, when you give the work to someone else. Uh, whatever. Uh, I'll think of it sh later, I'm sure, and I'll feel stupid. But Oh, Delegate! Yeah, you can delegate the job of checking DD Ments to, like, a Blissey. So... Anyway, so then uh, you can check these others, and unlike Swampert, you are also a check to Snorlax, so that opens up a lot of avenues in your team building. So, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, join dis my Discord and uh, ask all the great advanced players there. I'm also there, and I can answer your questions too. So, or you can ask in the comments, whatever's fine. So, uh, yeah. Oh, if you're still. If I haven't mentioned it yet, then liking and commenting the video helps with the algorithm to help make me a YouTube superstar, so you can go ahead and help me out with that. Yeah, that feels really good to say. Anyway, moving on. Uh, I also have a Patreon if you want to give me your money, which feels even better to say. Anyway, so mixed set uh, number one, because there are two and they are different enough to where I had to split them up. So this set is just basically a Pokemon that... It's basically a special attacker with Explosion and Meteor Mash to keep Blissey and Tyranitar respectively out of your face. 
because the psychic fire combination is nice, and, uh, sorry, let me catch my thoughts. So, uh, yeah, it's basically that, and uh, Meteor Mash means you can actually hurt Blissey without exploding, which is nice. Think of it like the T-Tar uh, needing a f second physical attack alongside Focus Punch to actually threaten Blissey one-on-one. -on -one. So, uh, yeah, you, will never, you should never see a Metagross without explosion. Almost ever. I mean, I could see the argument, but... Oh, I should mention that, uh, depending on your set, you can slot Toxic in here somewhere, either over Mash or EQ. I've used both, but that's, uh, generally niche. But it's nice for, like, catching Moltres and non-refresh waters and Zapdos. So, uh, yeah, there's that. So now this set, you're gonna run a plus special attack nature always. It's just, uh, you either can EV it to be really fast, I would say, around here for... Swampert and then rest in attack or HP. I think attack is generally going to be more useful Because uh, the HP investment doesn't do a ton so you either do that or you can run quiet and just max HP so you're living like Dugtrio and physical ments and whatnot and uh, you know any ments actually because you'll live uh, fire blast as well So those are the options. I think fast is generally better for the sim similar reasons as on a uh, CB gross this is not a defensive gross. You want as many offensive opportunities as you can get with it. And the stuff that... When you use its defensive capabilities, you know, it's typing and resist... Or typing and the resist that come from that typing. Uh, and it's natural good bulk, then, you know, it doesn't need investment. Whereas the speed investment is going to make a tangible difference. So, I would uh, run something like this set. And I should also mention that... It does not necessarily have to run Meteor Mash last, because Metagross also gets Pursuit. Now, Pursuit should not be... If you are, like, banking on a bunch of Pokémon that cannot touch Gengar at all, like a non-Shadow Ball Snorlax, then I would not only bank on Pursuit Metagross to remove Gengar, because it does not do that much if Gengar switches out. And obviously, if Gengar stays in, then you Psychic it to Oblivion. That's really nice. Uh, it hits harder than T-Tar's Crunch. But I... Oh, shh. Shoot, that reminds me, uh, T-Tar, the Pursuit set can also run Black Glasses if you want to hit Specially Defensive Gengar really hard, and like Claydol and other stuff uh, harder. Celebi as well. So lack of recovery can suck, but I like Black Glasses a lot. Anyway, back to Pursuit Metagross. It's nice against, uh, it doesn't need the attack EVs, really, I would just go, I would go modest at this point, so. Still fast, but modest. Uh, so, you don't need to power up if you have Meteor Mash, then yeah, give it more attack, but with this, then it's fine. So, yeah, Explosion, Pursuit. Uh, it's a good combo. It chips Gengar really nicely. And you can also do stuff that Pursuit Tar can never dream of. Like, on Ladder, I like to switch it into CB Gross Meteor Mash, and then Pursuit it. And uh, Pursuiting a Metagross with your own Metagross is a pretty great feeling. It's nice. You can also do stuff like switch into CB Ments or Arrow HP Flying and Pursuit them. Uh, it's usually more effective against Ments, because Arrow dies if it actually stays in on an attack, but uh, it can still be nice. Like, you can put in range of your Psychic or whatever. So, yeah, Pursuit Gross is really nice. And uh, if you're using this set on a Mag team, Psychic Pursuit Gross, which is also good, then you can run... Uh, if you're running Mag, you don't need HP Fire, and I would recommend running HP Grass, so that's another set. Uh, this is only with Mag, bear in mind. But yeah, it's the set is really fun, and uh, but only on Mag, usually Mag offense teams. Oh, and Lumberry is an option. Uh, Lumberry is obviously great for Gengar, Will-O-Wisp, and like Breloom Spore, and you know, absorbing random T waves and body slams. But uh, leftovers is longevity is very nice. Metagr this Metagross is meant to be more resilient in the face of status because it's supposed to psychic in pursuit against Gengar, so a burn is not the end of the world. And a fast boom is still nice, even if it's not doing a lot of damage because of the burn because then you can deny your opponent's uh, turn. So, for example, uh, with the way ADV mechanics work, if your Metagross explodes on a Suicune, and the Suicune is slower, then Suicune will not move that turn. So that can be big for denying uh, Suicune a rest. Even if you're not actually doing much damage to it because you're burned, then that can still be useful because, you know, switching won't deny the Suicune rest and you're not going to be KOing it with anything else, so by KOing yourself you prevent the rest and you leave it in range for your Aerodactyl or whatever. 
So that's mix set number one. Mix set number two, this is an Ostomatito set and it is great because you pack a Skarm hitting move and a Swampert hitting move in the same set because here on uh, this set with HP Fire, that means no HP Grass, and Psychic is a pretty nice chunk to Swampert, especially offensive variants, but HP Grass makes it really deadly. Then you have Earthquake, so you're not totally helpless against Magneton. This set is not great against Magneton, uh, even with HP Fire, but uh, it's generally EQ's better than Mash, because uh, at least you don't have to explode on it, per se, and it also hits opposing Metagross a lot harder. You can run Mash, if you really want, but I think this set generally works really nicely. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. You're, this is not the set that switches into Gengar Willowis, but just gets in and uses coverage to um, make things really hard for the opponent. You know, it's nice to force in things like Zapdos and Celebi that technically wall it, and then you explode on them and abuse it with a Suicune. Asta did that a lot on uh, his teams with the set. So, that's second mixed gross. Here's Agility Gross, it can also run Leftovers, Lumberry is nice if you're going for a setup, so you like DD Tar, you shrug off Will-O-Wisps and T-Waves. So uh, this speed investment is to outrun Aerodactyl and Jolteon after an Agility, the bulk is just nice, gives you a good chance at living plus one Ments, and uh, max attacks, max attack. so it's pretty simple. Uh, like with DD Tar, you don't switch this Metagross into attacks too often, which can make it kind of hard to use because... You know, you're not making use of its great defensive utility, but you can also look at it like a bulky gross with three great attacks that can agility and go for a sweep if you like. So if you're going to use it like that, then I would think maybe lefties might be more up your alley, but Lum is always a great item too. And finally, another Asta uh, Metagross. Salic, this also boosts its speed. Now with Salic, Metagross will, this Metagross will not outspeed Aerodactyl and Jolteon. Because with 262, you know, times 1.5, then it reaches 393 speed, which is one point behind Arrow and Jolt, which sucks. But it outspeeds everything else. Is that an ad? Yeah, it is. Uh, and uh, what's more is that you don't need to take a hit in order to agility. You can endure against pretty much everything. You can endure in the face of Dugtrio, Charizard, whatever. And that ensures that you get your attack off against pretty much everything. So, Endure, letting you live any hit and get your speed boost is so, so, so good against offense. And of course, Salak is nice because not having to actually use a move for your speed boost can also mean you do stuff like switching to Zapdos T-Bolt. And instead of just dying the next turn, now you have Salak boost and you can blow up. So yeah, Salak grows really nice, uh, very good on Magneton physical offense. So, you know, all these, most of these sets are good on, you know, offensive teams, you know, offense with Magneton, well, CB doesn't go with Magneton, because you're using CB Gross to take out Skarm, and mix sets don't go with Magneton, well, sorry, the mix sets with HP Fire, those don't go with uh, Mag, neither does this set, but this set would, uh, the HP Grass Pursuit set, because that's, uh, that's on a Magneton team. Because you don't need to hit Skarm, because you're using Magneton for that. So, uh, put it this way. If you don't have a way to really pound Skarm with your Metagross, Magneton makes a great partner. So, like, these sets make tremendous uh, Magneton partners. Uh, the tank sets. So, if you don't have a CB Boom or a super effective... Or HP Fire or Thunder Punch, then... It's not required, but it does go a long way. You know, either you Magneton the Skarm, or you have things like Mix Mence or an Offensive Swampert to wear the Skarmory down for you. So, there's Metagross. Blissey, the standard set, Modest. Max Special Attack, because Ice Beam needs to be killing Salamences and Dugtrios, and also threatening Defensive Zapdos. So, the last move can be a million things. It can be Aromatherapy or Heal Bell. I don't think there's a notable difference. Aromatherapy doesn't get stopped by Soundproof, I guess, so... Use that. Uh, counter is good. F uh, flamethrower or Fire Blast is good. Uh, big surprise factor for Fortress. That's the thing that's safe. Uh, what else? Thunderbolt is good. Helps against Suicune. Helps against Skarmory. T-Wave is good. Toxic is really good for uh, Calm Mind Suicune and other Blissey. Uh, T-Wave is nasty against offense. You know, Fire Moves or T-Wave are really good against switchins like Heracross and Metagross. And I love Wish, personally. It heals up your Skarm, it heals up 
you know, your physical wall because physical attackers come in on Bliss, so keeps your team healthy, and you have two recovery moves, which is really nice in longer games. So you don't need Ice Beam necessarily, by the way, but you if you don't have Ice Beam, then you 100% need a Pursuiter, a very good Pursuiter, so pretty much always going to be T-Tar, because otherwise you are completely walled by Gengar. And you can't just T-Wave it because that gets stopped by Tong Gengar. So, generally run Ice Beam. Or, you know, Flamethrower if you're not afraid of Salamence and uh, Dugtrio, in theory. But you need... It's usually going to be by Ice Beam because of the superior coverage. Uh, it lets Blissey act as a great DD Mence check, actually. So, uh, yeah, th I think those are all the big moves on Blissey. Uh, Call Mine Blissey really, really sucks. I would not use it. Ooh, Sing. Sing is very, very good. Uh, Sing is, uh, it makes use of the fact that Blissey has a lot of free turns, so you have a lot of chances to hit it, so that kind of makes up for the accuracy. And sleeping things, of course, is very, very nasty, especially because Blissey is such a good partner with Dugtrio, so your Blissey sleeps the opponent's Blissey, and then Dugtrio comes in and goodbye, so. Uh, Snatch is really fun. Uh, I and a couple others like Passy G and Asta have been toying with this, and I think it's really, really great. Uh, it's great for stealing recovery moves from the opponent, so uh, if you're facing a Refresh Milotic, for example, and you've Toxicked it, then you can Snatch as it uses Refresh, and its Refresh fails, and its Recover fails, and it's glorious. Uh, also, it steals Calm Minds, so uh, you can you know, toy with Calm Mind guys. Uh, so, it, this is very, very niche, though. Sing is good. Uh, skill Swap, I... Sure, skill swap could actually no skill swap would probably be bad because you're giving something else natural cure. So, but yeah, those are all the good options. Uh, Call mine Blissey really sucks. I think it's very very not good. But if you are gonna use Call Mine, use Bolt Beam, Thunderbolt, and Ice Beam. It's not the worst, but I just hate how it goes from being a great Suicune counter slash check uh, against Rest Suicune to a um, to just set up fodder for Roar Suicune. Oh, another thing Snatch does, if you have Toxic, I think you should use Seismic Toss Toxic Snatch. Uh, so that means pair it with a Pursuit Tar, so you don't lose to Gengar. But if you, uh, you know, let's, you can Snatch a Suicune's Rest, and if you time it right and your opponent doesn't rest to the last second, then you can prevent them from resting, or, you know, that, that's a little idealistic, but it's still an uh, idea of what uh, Snatch Blissey can do. But yeah, generally, uh, the move you will most commonly see in the last slot on Blissey is Toxic or Wish. So there's that. Oh, or Thunder Wave. Uh, but Counter is counter is fairly common. Um, yeah. So, but uh, to Thunder Wave, Toxic Wish. Uh, in no particular order. Uh, depends on who you're playing, because everyone has their preferences. Like I said earlier, it is a matter of preference. So that's Blissey for you. Gengar. Oh, this one's going to be a pain. So, the thing with Gengar is that it can run, like, any combination of moves. So, I will just list the moves it runs before we get into the EVs. Because the EVs can be anything. It can run Destiny Bond. It can run Fire Punch. It can run Giga Drain. It can run Ice Punch. It can run... Not so much Pear Song. Uh, Ice Punch... Uh, Taunt, of course. And uh, Thunderbolt. So those are the moves it most commonly uses. I don't think it's got anything here that's really worth much. Uh, yeah, everything else is mostly gimmicky. Uh, so, for defensive sets, I mean. So, for defensive sets, you're generally going to see... Oh, Explosion, of course. So, for defensive sets, you're generally going to see Will-O-Wisp Taunt and then Ice Punch Thunderbolt, something like this. But it could also be Fire Punch Giga Drain. UD used that set a lot. It's good. And, uh, you can do that, or you can run Explosion over Taunt, you, so you can run Willowisp Explosion, Fire Punch, Giga Drain, or Willowisp Explosion, Thunderbolt, or you can run, uh, I really like this set, Willowisp, Taunt, Destiny Bond, and one attack, so Thunderbolt or Ice Punch, uh, really depends on your team, which one is better. Uh, Taunt, Debond, I think Ice Punch is generally safer, but it really could go either way. Safer because you can actually chip Swamp it a little bit and don't lose to stuff like Sub Flygon. But, uh, yeah, there's that. And, uh, you know, hitting Zapdos harder, slightly. And, yeah, so the moves can really be anything. You can run Explosion anywhere. So, as you can see, it's kind of a mess. But, yeah, that's what Gengar can do. And uh, it's the same for the fast bulgy set. 
The only difference between Spread F and Fast Bulky is the EV spread, and that EV spread is important enough to where I decided it was worth separating. So Spread F, uh, what this does is uh, 248 HP, 44 defense, that lives plus one Salamence, so you can act as a good check to it. And uh, then 96 speed outruns Moltres, but that's really just a leftover spread from the 112 Spread F, which it takes to survive Pursuit Tar Crunch or Pursuit on the Switch plus Sand. So, you have 8 EVs left over, you can put them in speed, you can put them in defense. I think 52 de defense survives plus 1 Gara, HP flying, and sand, so if you're running Thunderbolt, that's worthwhile. See, there's another team-specific consideration. If you need Gengar to check Gyarados, then you run Thunderbolt. Uh, you can put them in special attack, just if you feel like, you know, slightly, slightly, slightly harder hits. You can put them in special defense for help against Black Glasses, Tar, and you know, Psychic and Clay Dolls, and Celebes, and Jirachis, and Starmies. You can creep in speed, whatever. So, uh, that's really up to you. So now, Fast Bulky is pretty much the same set as the Spadef Gar, except now it's vulnerable to Pursuit Tar. But it's still fast, because... It's, it's still bulky to check Salamence, because that is its primary purpose. But it's also fast. Outrunning the base 100, Celebi, Jirachi, Salamence, Zapdos, Flygon. That's really nice. Charizard as well. Uh, oh, that's another great consideration, actually. That's why Thunderbolt, I think Thunderbolt was the better move overall. Because without it, then your Will-O-Wisp attempts are completely walled by Charizard and Moltres. So, uh, yeah, th I think if you're going to run Monogar, I mean, you can run Explosion here, too. You can run Explosion or Destiny Bond to guarantee you're taking something down with you. But uh, if you're going to run one attack on Will-O-Wisp Gengar, then you are, then it should be Thunderbolt. Can't be getting walled by Moltres, Charizard, and, you know, even Blaziken, arguably, but mostly those guys. Uh, so, there's that. And the reason Will-O-Wisp is such a big deal is because Will-O-Wisp is so hard to switch into. And as soon as you don't have Will-O-Wisp, then you become walled by things like Jirachi and Metagross, because Fire Punch is going to be doing enough from those sets. And Will-O-Wisp lets you actually toy with Blissey. You know, Focus Punch stuff is unreliable, and on defensive sets, then... You're not pulling that off, so use Will-O-Wisp on your bulky Gars. Uh, same here, same movesets, whatever. And uh, then the speed is also really nice. So, uh, for those base 100s, those matchups. So, uh, the 44 defense, and then the 40 EVs, you can put them in special attack, you can put them in special defense, you can creep on speed. If you go uh, just remainder and speed, then you always outrun Adam and Dugtrio, which isn't really too useful on this kind of Gar, but... Or on Gar in general, but you know, it might not hurt, so if you're that kind of player, then sh sure, but uh, Special Defense also helps a little bit. Special Attack might help if you're running uh, two attacks. Like uh, Ice Punch, if you're running Ice Punch, and then it might be worthwhile to go uh, with Special Attack Investment for insurance against bulky Salamence. So, as a 40 Special Attack would definitely ruin that spread. You would KO with Sand, if not outright. Probably with Sand, but yeah. Uh, bulky Gengar should be used on Sand most of the time. Uh, these sets are generally used on Spikes teams, but they... Or Fast Bulky Gar, you know, with Destiny Bond Tricks, can be used on offense, like dual status. But I would still probably put that more in the offensive category. Uh, if we didn't mention, Blissey is mostly used. Blissey can be used on every team, but is mostly used on defensive Spike stuff. But, you know, if it's bulky, Blissey can go on it. That said, Blissey on offense is still good, so just not common. Snorlax is more preferred, but that Will-O-Wisp neutrality of sorts because it has natural cure and instant recovery is really nice on Bliss, so helps a lot against Moltres uh, in particular. But yeah, Blissey, bulky teams. Anyway, uh, speaking of bulky teams, Gengar is often used alongside Blissey on those bulky teams. Fighting immunity is really nice, uh, so it comes in against the Pokemon that want to hurt Blissey with that or like a Choice Band Earthquake or something, because... Gengar's immunities are amazing. Uh, helps against Heracross a lot. So that's one, another reason for Fire Punch if you're afraid of Hera. So it really it depends on your team. And uh, yeah, so there's this spread. Then there's also this spread, which I like, which is not perfect, but it allows you to survive uh, Pursuit Tar with Sand while still maintaining your 330 speed. So... Uh, you're not going to be living plus one Salamence at all, ever, but... And, and there's a more efficient spread, which I've since forgotten. It's like 160 everything. This might be it, actually. But uh, for 
you know, when, when in doubt, just this spread is fine to be as safe as possible against Pursuit Tar while still keeping your speed EVs. So you gotta decide which is more important, checking Salamence or surviving Pursuit Tar. So, I think Pursuit Tar is generally more useful, but the defense HP combination is more standard on Gar. So, yeah, there's that. Now, Offensive Gar, this one can still run Will-O-Wisp because Will-O-Wisp is ridiculous, but it can run everything. Now, instead of Giga Drain, it's often going to run HP Grass for, you know, big smacks. On uh, Swampert and T-Tar in particular, Swampert in, uh, is big because uh, it can survive Giga Drains, but HP Grass, the 10 BP difference is big, so, you know, HP Grass, and then you can start running Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, or sorry, Thunderbolt, Fire Punch, Explosion, some people like Dual Status, Hypnosis, Will-O-Wisp, yeah, you could absolutely run Hypnosis, Will-O-Wisp, Thunderbolt, Explosion, and it would be good. You could run that on these sets, too. Gengar is crazy versatile, so, uh, but if you're only running one attacking move, then you're probably not gonna uh, be worrying about uh, special attack investment, so you can run bulk on this, but, you know, it's just, for offensive, then you can run, this set is generally safe ish on offense. You don't love facing Jirachi and Metagross, but if you're paired with spikes, then you can deal with them. You could still fit in Fire Punch somewhere. Uh, so it's... You can run non-explosion if you don't want to blow up on Bliss and Lax, mostly Bliss. Also, don't worry about having a minus attack nature and explosion, because if you've got spikes and sand, it'll be fine against Blissey. And if you're running a super offensive team, then you're going to have a Doug Trio to finish the job. You will never be able to invest enough in attack realistically without severely hindering your Gengar overall, so I would not worry about that. So, yeah, that's Offensive Gar. Ridiculous, endless amounts of options and opportunities, so... Uh, there you go, and this is used on more offensive teams like Calm Mind, Special Offense leaning teams, but it can also be used on more aggressive Spikes teams if you want a more aggressive kick from your Gengar with more power and coverage as opposed to defensive coverage. So, now here comes Swampert. Uh, here is the old standard tank. Uh, it's not as common anymore, but it's still, you know, very, it's still the standard. You gotta, you can't be caught unawares by it. So, you know, EQ for Stab, and hitting T-Tar, Ice Beam for Ments, and, you know, Zapdos, and Protect for that recovery, which we love so much. And then the last slot, you know, you can run Hydro Pump for Chipping Skarm. If you are going to do that, I would recommend a little less... I think... Oh yeah, this is the good spread uh, for Hydro Pert. Uh, because 36 Special Attack always Oko's Arrow with Hydro. And 44 Spadef is important because that always lives Modest, Zapdos, or Moltres HP Grass. Uh, and then Defense is still fine. You can run 136 but I th Defense, but I think that's kind of pushing it. I think this spread is generally fine. So yeah, it doesn't have to be Hydro Pump though. I think Toxic and especially Roar. I love Roar on this Swampert set. They're really good. You can even run Curse if you want to 1v1 Bulky, Suicune, and Snorlax actually. I don't know if it technically 1v1 Snorlax, but it definitely doesn't immediately lose to it. So you have stuff, you can play for Earthquake Crits or Ice Beam Freezes without being trucked by Body Slams. But yeah, I really love Roar on it. I think it's very good. So if you're not running Hydro Pump, then obviously ditch the special attack EVs and pump more into bulk. But yeah, there's that. And uh, that's the standard pert. Now the more common variant is the Mono pert. Uh, I think Roar is also really good over Refresh, but Refresh definitely makes it easier to use because you don't have to be afraid of Toxic, which is great for 1v1s against Blissey and longer games. And uh, yeah, otherwise, same spread, and you check the same physical attackers, the T-Tar, the Metagross, the Salamence, the Arrow, the Flygon. I mean, not having Ice Beam coverage can kind of suck sometimes, but Toxic will get the job done. Surf is good coverage overall, and yeah, it's pretty simple. You use uh, these perts on... So, I mean, I think this per these perts are more at home on defensive teams uh, with spikes, or you know at least the intention of playing longer games. Uh, this Swamper set used to be a staple on even offensive teams, but that has given way to the offensive set, which you see here, which uh, was made by Undisputed, and it pretty much works on the idea that Swamper can check offensive threats just fine with its natural typing and bulk, but by fully investing it in its offenses, then you also make it more dangerous against defensive teams, thus making it more fitting on an offense team. So, it does need physical 
uh, backup on the defensive side because you're not going to be you, you don't know you need your Metagross and possibly even Salamence or Zapdos for ground moves because uh, Swamper can get overwhelmed fairly easily and that's actually why I like to run less speed and a lot of defense on this puppy but you know fast is fine so uh, yeah that's the offensive Swampert so that's why generally this set is now more relegated to more balanced teams uh, it can still be used on offense, but, you know, generally if you're seeing an offensive team, you know, Zapdos, Metagross, Titar, Snorlax, Salamence, then it's very likely their Swampert is this set. Uh, if you see Leftovers, of course, because if it's not Leftovers, then it's the Salix set, which we'll get to in a second. But, yeah, there's, uh, this Pert is good. Uh, you can run 28 attack EVs, which will always KO Blissey with Earthquake and Focus Punch, if I recall. Uh, Bold Blissey, I think. So, uh... It's something like that, but it's a good investment if you can afford it, which you generally can. I think speed is not that important on it. Matter of fact, I like to go really slow and really pump the defense to be safer against Ments. So yeah, that's uh, this is the sw go-to Swamper for a lot of offense teams. Needs some backup, but it's good. So now Endeavor, now you really need physical backup if you're running this set. You know, maybe even a second water type like Suicune. But, the upsides are nice because while this is not the fastest thing in the world, then it can it's still fast enough against much of the mid-ranged, mid-paced advanced matter game, even for offensive Pokemon. And you can get a jump on him and hit him really hard with Torrent Hydros, bring stuff down to 1 HP with Endeavor and have Sand finish him off, and it's just really irritating to deal with. Now, it's like I said, it's not that fast. I remember Salad Gross was 262 and it couldn't even outspeed Arrow and Jolt. Now, uh, Endeavor Swampert is... 240, which is actually a benchmark other Pokemon EV for because it's a big deal. But it's also, uh, you know, it's just barely missing out on max, excuse me, uh, max speed T Tar, but still gets the job done. Oh, that reminds me, on this set, when you're running Rash, you have to be really careful of T Tar HP Grass because you're not going to be living that. Same with Salamence HP Grass and Zapdos and whatnot, whereas these sets can take one and not be completely out of commission. I mean, it still sucks because they're slow, but they'll still be useful for death fodder, or, you know, thwarting a arrow rock slide later or something. So with this one, you really have to be careful. So, uh, but the upsides are well high enough to make it worthwhile. So, yeah, with this set, then you sub down to one HP and you endeavor stuff, and you s throw out torrent hydros and it's a good time, but you're not even outspeeding uh, Dugtrio or Starmie, so those are two big ones. But you're outspeeding Gengar and everything below, so most stuff. Now, the last move is left blank because usually it's Ice Beam because, yes, uh, uh, Salamence is annoying and Celebi can be irritating. But recover users like Celebi, Milotic, Starmie, and uh, Soft Whale Blissey, they will stall this Swampert out one-on-one -on -one because it only has APP with Endeavor. So you have to, uh, you know, consider that with your moves. Uh, some players use Roar to force the opposing Soft Whale or Recover Spammer to switch out. And then if they switch back in on the Endeavor, they die. And the poke, let's say you roared them out to their T-Tar, either, you know, they can die to a Hydro Pump, or if they switch back to their uh, Recovering Pokemon, then they can die to Endeavor on the switch, and then Swamper just trucks through them. So that's what Roar does, and it's nice with Spikes. But some players also like to use Swagger, which just kind of, uh... <laughs> it's really dumb, but it does kind of work, because they have to spam recovery moves, so you just Swagger them, and then you Endeavor, and they confuse themselves and die. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty brutal. Uh, but yeah, that's Endeavor Swamper for you. Good offensive Pokemon. Uh, although, you know, with not even leftovers, let alone defensive investment, then you really will need physical backup here. But it takes its natural uh, entry points with its typing and bulk, and it turns them into all-out offense. So, And it's also got the option of getting faster, which can be a great tool late game. Uh, so, to really let it take over an opposing team. So, uh, yeah, that's Swamper for you. So, these two sets are used on more offensive teams, and these two sets are used on more defensive teams. So, Zapdos. Uh, keep it simple. Offensive Zapdos can be used on any team, offense or defense. Defensive Zapdos is strictly relegated to more defensive teams. So, uh, the thing about offensive Zapdos is 
you run Thunderbolt, you pick your hidden power, usually grass, sometimes ice, and then any two last moves are great. The standard is Baton Pass and Thunder Wave. BP because it gets in your big offensive threats safely, like the Frail Breloom, you can BP out of Snorlax or Blissey, and voila, your Breloom is in for free without a risky double switch. And Thunder Wave because it's good at slowing down T-Tar, it can paralyze a Calm Mind Jirachi, a Salamence, whatever. So, those two are good. You can also run Drill Peck to chip Blissey, Celebi, Oko, Heracross, and Breloom. That's actually really underrated. And uh, so there's that. And you can run Roar, which is especially nice with spikes, but uh, can be nice for preventing, you know, Calm Mind Celebi from boosting in your face and, you know, even worse, Baton Passing. So it can be whatever, really. And I even like Thunder, honestly. Not Thunder as the sole attacking move, but... Uh, soul electric stab but thunderbolt hp grass filler and thunder because you thunderbolt something like a t-tar which is out of range of the next thunderbolt and then you thunder the next turn and you just kill it and it is glorious <laughs> it's so 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 strong it's crazy uh so th that's just something i think is uh, underrated it just smashes metagross looking to take a t-bolt and explode on you too it's wonderful so there's that. Oh, you can also run um, Substitute alongside Baton Pass if you like. You can run Toxic to uh, mess with Blissey. You can run Protect, especially alongside Toxic, because that racks up damage on Blissey and makes it scared. And, you know, they might have to switch out. And uh, it also prevents Metagross from blowing up on you. It scouts Aerodactyl from... Uh, it scouts Aerodactyl's move, you know, if it's going to Rock Slide, if it's going to try to predict the switch with EQ and you just totally destroy it. And even if it rock slides, thanks to pressure, you just burn two rock slide PP, so it can't do that forever. Is that another ad? Oh, alright. Sorry, I'm gonna skip through that. Alright, uh, so, yeah, I just googled this play- or er, not Google. I searched on YouTube Pokemon Gen 3 Remixes, and this is a playlist by Acoustic Harmonia, if you're looking for it. It's 136 videos long. Anyway, so... Uh, yeah. Oh, and I didn't even mention Agility, which makes Zapdos a fearsome sweeper in its own right. So let's say Arrow Earthquake your Metagross, and it's just gonna switch out and come back and Rock Slide you. Whoops, you Agility, and you sweep now. So Agility is really nice on it, too. You can even go Agility Baton Pass, and it's not even like it's a dedicated Baton Passer, because BP is just a good move on Zapdos in general, but you have the option of passing Agility. So that's what makes Zapdos such a well-rounded, dangerous Pokemon. So great, great Pokemon. So, in, sum in summary, the standard is BP Thunder Wave on most offensive teams, with a sprinkle of Roar if you're on ladder for stupid Baton Pass stuff, but uh, all you can use is Agility, Baton Pass, Drill Peck, uh, Protect, Roar, uh, Thunder, and Toxic. I don't think there's anything in here that you really need. Uh, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So, those are all of them. Oh, and HP Ice versus HP Grass. HP Grass is usually good because Swampert countering you is dumb, but if you can handle Swampert, I mean if you can really, really handle Swampert, consider this scenario. Swampert comes in on your Zapdos, you can't hurt it. Toxic doesn't do anything because it has Refresh. What do you switch to? Do you have a comfortable switch in that scenario? If yes, you can use HP Ice. If not, use HP Grass. Celebi and friends can be dealt with, and Salamence does not like Thunderbolt, so Swampert is a big deal. But HP Ice is very, very good, I will say. So, uh, defensive Zapdos, yada, yada, yada. Uh, yes, yeah, Calm, because it sits on Blissey in longer games. It's wonderful. Uh, you Toxic, and it's, uh, it sits on Blissey, sits on Swampert, doesn't mind a Toxic from Skarm, because it rests. Hard to kill for bulky Gengar. Uh, hard to kill for especially attacking T-Tar variants, especially the Crunch variants. So... That's another reason why Ice Beam is so good on them. So a lot of common defensive TSS teams, they have a lot of trouble withstanding Zapdos that doesn't immediately crumple to their weak attacks or status and can actually annoy them in return. So here you have a lot of options. Uh, you can run Toxic, Roar, Light Screen I think is really good. Uh, you can run Toxic, you can run Roar, you can run HP Grass for Refresh Swamp or trying to wall you. Uh, some players use this set on teams dedicated to r changing the weather and using Suicune and Snorlax outside of Sand. So in that scenario, you can run Rain Dance uh, with Thunder if you like. But yeah, you can run Rain Dance and uh, try and remove T-Tar's weather. So 
Uh, yeah, other, it's overall just a great, great Pokemon. You can run a Thunder Wave on it too. Thunder Wave T Wave or Thunder Wave Toxic is a great combo, and it really is uh, preference for. So it's kind of like Blissey, except the standards are less defined for this set because it's not seen as commonly because offensive is so prevalent. So, but you know, some combination of Roar, Toxic, maybe a Hidden Power, maybe T Wave. Uh, if it's on a team with Dugtrio, Suicune, and Snorlax, it's probably going to have Rain Dance, but yeah. And uh, even Baton Pass is okay on it because it scouts switches, and it's unexpected on defensive Zapdos, but it can still be very valuable, especially alongside Dugtrio. Uh, so, you know, T-Tar comes in thinking, okay, well, this defensive is Zap uh, this Zapdos is defensive, so it's not really going to threaten me, and I can threaten it out. Boom, BP, Dugtrio, yikes. Uh, I can pull similar tricks with Toxic BP against Blissey, so... Uh, finally, dedicated BP. This Zapdos set is rare, but I didn't want to mention it. Uh, it's all out offensive. It uses a Pinch Berry alongside Substitute and passes it out. You can run HP Grass in the last slot. You can run Roar to prevent yourself from getting phased by, I don't know, Roar T Tar. Uh, but generally, I don't think you're going to do that. You can run uh, Agility, so you're passing a lot. You know, Agility, Sub to Pinch Berry, BP. Yikes. It doesn't have to be Leechy, although this is very commonly Leechy because... Not because Zapdos abuses it itself, but because Zapdos draws the special wall in, right? Like Blissey. And so you sub down to Leechy Berry, and then you pass to a physical attacker that beats Blissey. And then the physical attacker has an extra plus one to beat the physical wall with. So DD Tar or Metagross become a lot scarier. Of course, Pattaya Berry is nice. Like if you're running a Calm Mind Pass Celebi team and you have the Zapdos on it... You can sub down to Pattaya and, you know, get another special attack boost and become even more dangerous. So, yeah, good set. A lot more niche than the others. Uh, offensive is the most splashable, but yeah. Uh, and it's used on super, super offensive teams. Not dedicated BP teams, as the name might suggest, I just realized. But it's more that the Zapdos set itself is dedicated to BPing, as opposed to being an all-around threat, because it doesn't have the, leftover, the longevity of leftovers which is big in a sand-infested metagame. So, moving on. Skarmory, standard, can run, be run on offense, defense alike. This is the standard set. Now, there's a lot of tweaks. You can trade in uh, Protect for Taunt. You can trade in Toxic for Drill Peck. But you should also always be using Roar, in my opinion, because by using Whirlwind, you reveal you don't have Drill Peck. So, uh... Yeah, unless you're on ladder and you're facing a bunch of soundproof Mr. Mime garbage, and you just want to beat those BP teams for free wins, then, you know, in that case, be my guest. But other than that, then no, just Roar. Roar Drill Peck is good because it uh, chips Fortress and Refresh Claydol. The Refresh Claydol really sucks, and people don't use it anymore, thank God. So you can go back to Toxic, and it's... But you want to be able to hit Fortress on teams without Gengar, so... Yeah, Toxic Protect is always a great combo. Roar, you can uh, you don't need to run all this special defense. If you're running Taunt, you can run a lot of speed to get a jump on other Skarm, and it'll generally still function the same. Uh, as for EV spreads, then, you know, you can... It depends. I would go either around here for Refresh Milo, or here for Bulk Up Machamp and Milo that beat Refresh Milo, or here for Offensive Swampert, or... Yeah, and at that point you can run yeah. I think it's at once you go to a certain point like here I think it's actually more efficient to run jolly and Then special defense EVs like see look here. We got a 211 speed stat and 225 special defense But uh, if we go with the jolly nature then and we go to 211 speed then we get oh Actually, it's the other way around. So no definitely run careful uh, always check if your nature if your stuff could not be more efficient uh, I must have been thinking of something else, but I think once you get like to this point the Swamper point the 220 then I think it's slightly better so 220 that was 216 I think Or 215 Yeah, okay, so it, you run uh, jolly if you're outspeeding offensive Swampert and you run careful if you're anything less than that So you get uh, an extra special defense point. That could win you the game. So yeah, and you can mess with the set. Taunt. Standard Skarm is fine. And this is YOLO Skarm. This is actually what it's referred to as. It's HP ground for Magneton. Now, a lot of Magneton have adapted to the set, so they run either bulk for it, or speed, or sometimes even both. So a lot of players started running Jolly, so they could, you know, hit it on the switch, or, you know, K 
KO uh, faster, bulkier mags. Because HP Fire Mag, you know, Mag and Skarm share the same base speed stat. But with HP Fire, which Mag often needs to hit Fortress, then you will off. Then it will never be able to tie this Skarm. So Jolly is fine. You can throw HP Granite on a switch, and it's good. But uh, the thing with this Skarm is that it's a really, really frail. Like, Max Special Event Skarm does amazing things like survive Zapdos Thunderbolt and phase out Offensive Calm Mind Celebi and Suicune and stuff, but uh, here, none of that. You gotta be really careful around stuff like Swampert Hydro. But, you know, against stuff like Blissey that can't really hurt you either way, then you can make, or Physical T-Tar, you can make your way in, get your spike, it's fine. So, oh yeah, you'll definitely die to a T-Tar Fire Blast on, like, this set. But, uh, it's fast and you get a lot of opportunities and... Uh, you get to potentially play around mag, so it's really nice. And taunt prevents healing and spiking from opposing skarms and forays, so... Uh, yes. This set will... You're generally going to want to support skarm in some way, like via Gengar or Magneton or Pursuit Tar or a combination of these, but uh, generally you won't need Gengar and Magneton, actually, so... Uh, Pursuit Tar plus one of the other two. But yeah, that's uh, that's fairly basic. You can look up a common you can look up the common team structure to see what kind of team Skarmory is used on. So those are the standards there, and now we go on to Celebi. Defensive Celebi. This is a fairly complex EV spread, but this special attack investment, Oko's bulkless Dug Trio. This special attack, the special defense is to never be too a KO'd even by two max rolls from Starmie Ice Beam, nor to ever be Oko'd by a crit Ice Beam from full HP. The speed outruns Cloister? No, 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 sorry, sorry. Max speed T-Tar. Uh, so, you can tweak these EVs if you want. You could take out the special defense and make it faster to outrun Cloister and Vaporeon. You can run a little less defense, whatever. But this is the general all-purpose defensive Leech Seed Celebi. You can run a more specially defensive spread if you're more afraid of Waters and Electrics. You can run faster. You can run up to 270 speed to outrun Heracross and Suicune. Uh, so, it's really up to you and your team. But this is just a general template. So, the moves, Leech Seed Recover, I mean, these can really vary. If you have, you can run Calm Mind over HP Grass, you can run Baton Pass, you can run HP Fire to surprise Skarm and Fori, especially Fori, who thinks it's very safe against most Leech Seed uh, Celebi variants, which it is. So, uh, that's really nice. You can ditch Psychic if you have a Pursuit Tar, because you don't really need as much uh, with Gengar. You can run Reflect, you can run Light Screen. I love Light Screen, personally. So, it really is up to you. And the spread can be faster, more especially defensive, so... Uh, if you're running, going more... If you're going faster, then you can just change the nature to Timid and use the leftover ADVs, and boom. I uh, still got a very, very good Celebi, so actually the spread looks really nice. So uh, You should tweak to see if it's not more optimal to go bold and less EVs. Like, for example, what nature? Or how? Uh, 273? Okay. So we go down to 273, go to 270. Okay, so it's the exact same, but... Uh, if, actually, if you take... Wow, yeah, so see, this would be more optimal because you have a bonus point from 273 to 275 if you have a positive nature. So, you take out 4 HP and boom. So I think this is the spread if you want to go fast. And, uh, you know, if you want to be more especially defensive, you just change the nature to Calm. And uh, I tweak to always survive Dugtrio, which, uh, plus Sand, which is, you know, around here, I believe. I should know this offhand. I know it's between 36 and 44, so. Uh, yeah, there's that, so, yeah, that's Bold Selby, and the moves, oh, you can also throw in Heal Bell, most of the time Selby can't fit it, but, yeah, Psychic, HP Grass, Giga Drain if you're running, uh, Giga, uh, HP Fire as well, but Psychic, HP Grass, you know, HP Fire, Calm Mind, Psychic is really nice, I don't think Calm Mind, HP Grass, Leech Seed is very good, but Calm Mind, Leech Seed, Psychic, Recover is very good. You can run BP even without Calm Mind, just for similar purposes to Zapdos, just keeping momentum and surprise factor. Especially nice is when you survive, and if you have HP, uh, if you have BP over HP Grass, well, first of all, if you don't have HP Grass, then you can take out the special attack investment, because the special attack investment is used to KO Bulkless Doug with HP Grass, so if you don't have HP Grass, then you may as well take it out, and uh, get more speed or more bulk or whatever you need. But uh, if you have BP, then you can, and you have your own Dug Trio, then you BP out of the opposing Dug Trio that just HP bugged you, and you trap it with your own Dug and remove it. So 
there's that. So that's Bulky Celebi. I think that's everything it runs. You know, BP in the last slot. Uh, BP, Calm Mind, Hill Bell, Hidden Powers. Parasong is very, very, very rare. I wouldn't really expect it, but, you know, can do. Reflect, Light Screen, Protect is pretty okay. Toxic is feasible. But, uh, yeah, that's mostly it. Uh, yeah. So, Offensive Calm Mind, Celebi. This is the polar opposite. You're fast, you're strong, you blow through stuff. So, you can't... Unfortunately, because of HP Fire, then you cannot tie the other base 100, so Salamence, Jirachi, Zapdos, Flygon, Charizard. But, you know, you get some bulk out of it, so it's fine. If you're on ladder, I might recommend going up to 319, so you don't lose to a random Jinx. Uh, but, yeah, other than that, you know, around here is fine. Because uh, this outruns Bulky Gar, that outruns Moltres, because you gotta outrun Moltres. And, you know... That's then you get into creep wars. You can run less and less HP and more and more speed. But you know at that point that's up to you. Another ad, okay. So yeah, this is the coverage for odd attacking Celebi. Now another thing that you can run is offensive. Well, un, for other options you can also go modest to make it hit really hard. You lose some important uh, targets, mostly timid Moltres and Bulky Gar. But the power is really nice, especially with boosted Giga Drains against T Tar. Oh, it's delightful. Your Psychics hit hard, your HP fires really sting, Skarm and Metagross, so... Uh, now, for another option, you can go BP over... Uh, actually, generally you run Giga Drain, HP fire. I don't, because I don't think uh, being walled by Titar, who can often run Roar, is too good. But, if you're afraid of Roar Moltres, then you can run Psychic, HP fire. So, point is BP over one of your stabs. You can't ditch HP fire because otherwise Skarm walls you, and you can't run Calm Mind Celebi plus Magneton because Calm Mind, or sorry, Calm Mind BP Celebi plus Magneton because Calm Mind BP Celebi is supposed to be used on special offense, and Magneton takes up an important team slot to take out a Pokemon you should not be struggling with too much either way. I know Vapakuno likes Magneton on Calm Mind spam, but that's, uh, that's his style, and in the grand scheme of things, you will not want to. Sorry, my mic cut out for a second there. But yeah, I was saying uh, Vapakuno likes Magneton on Calm Mind Spam, but I personally don't. I think you shouldn't be taking up a, a valuable team slot to take out a Pokemon that you shouldn't be struggling with too much anyway. So just run the HP Fire. And uh, Psychic HP Fire is a nice combination if you have Doug Trio to remove Titar forcibly. And then you can Calm Mind Psychic Smack Moltres. So. Uh, or BP against other stuff. So, you're gonna lose efficacy against Starmie, but you can just BP to something like Zapdos. So yeah, I think Calm Mind Spam with BP Selby should be loading up on their Zapdos, Titar, Metagross, Swampert, Suicune, Jirachi. Uh, so, and you, you can easily fit a Dugtrio, so it's not a problem to not run Giga Drain, but I don't think you should be running Magneton and ditching HP Fire. So, right, hopefully that's all that got lost there, because I'm... Uh, so... Uh, yeah, there's that. You can run BP over one of your stabs, and you can run Modest. I really like those. Moving on, SD Pass. This is only to be used on Magneton teams, because otherwise Skarm will just wall you all day. But if you BP a Swords Dance to an Agility Metagross, for example, or a DD Gera or Mence or DD Tar, good night. It is devastating. So, uh, the EVs generally should be, you know, fast but, you know, also bulky, so I would just take a cue from your favorite defensive Celebi spread um, when you need on that team. Now the moves, oof. Okay, so the sta old standards are like HP Fighting and Shadow Ball, or one of those and Recover in the last slot, so you can continually come into bulky waters like Swampert and uh, heal off their assaults and then Swords Dance. Nowadays, I think SD Celebi should be played fast enough to where you're not, you know, recovering but some players have also experimented with another set that goes against that, that I'll show in a second. But yeah, if you run HP Fighting, I think you want 80 attack EVs, because I believe that is what Oko's max HP T-Tar after a Swords Dance. Shadow Ball is, of course, a big deal because, uh, what's it called? Gengar is massively threatening, because with Taunt it prevents you from passing, and completely walls you, so... Uh, you... but a lot of Swords Dance pass teams now like to run Pursuit T-Tar, so that's not as important. Uh, also, with Roar Moltres and possibly Roar Zapdos running around, then some players, like McMegan, have been running HP, or sorry, 
not even HP, rock, uh, ancient power, which leaves you still HP fighting if you want, or recover, or another move is HP grass, because uh, HP grass will prevent Roar Swampert and Roar Suicune from permanently walling you and phasing you out. That is actually uh, a funny little... I'm blanking on words because I've been yammering forever, but it's a funny little intricacy that those Roar Waters actually become perfect Celebi counters if it's running a standard SD pass set. But with HP Grass, you turn the table on them, and yeah, you can probably just run, uh, what's it called? Uh, Jolly still, because HP Grass with Stab is, and, you know, especially against Roar Swamper, it's still going to be slamming it. So, uh, yeah, this is a good spread. Good set. You can run you know, fast, you can run bulky. If you're not running HP fighting, don't bother with attack EVs, I don't think. I think bulk is more important. But you can also take it slow. I know some players like Linear Curve like this spread and uh, this set, and I think Star and others have tried it too. But uh, this spread, Recover, Leech Seed, SD, BP. Uh, good for giving your SD pass team longevity. They often lack that. And just generally being annoying because that's what SD Celebi is good at. So, or S uh, Celebi in general is. And then you can. If they're trying to get all passive on you by blocking your Leech Seeds with their uh, own Celebi or, you know, trying to just stall you out with stuff like Milotic and Blissey, then you can Swords Dance up and pass out. So, uh, that's the beauty of this set. So, a lot of flexibility on SD Pass Celebi, but use alongside Magneton and then throw on Metagross because it's a waste not to. And uh, if you're not running Shadow Ball, then you should probably have a Pursuit Tar. So, finally, one of my favorite sets, Subseed. Now, this set really likes being fast. And uh, like some bulk too, it can you know go to this first army, but you know whatever benchmarks you prefer again. And it could feasibly go slower, could feasibly go faster. Again, up to you. But this set is really nice, especially alongside trapping stuff, because a lot of Celebi switchins are trap vulnerable. Think Titar, Scar, and Bliss, and you could sub all over them, Leech Seed, pa and you can dry pass to your trapper and or your trappers if you're going that way. And you can, uh, yeah, you can just cause a lot of havoc. You can also pass to a big threat, like uh, I used a team for a long time that sub passed to Skarmory and Magneton and uh, Aerodactyl and it was dirty because SD or Leech Seed pass Celebi, or this set, you know, even though it doesn't have attacks and you want to be careful of your Leech Seed PP, it's still... It's a lot more consistent than you would expect a Pokemon with no attacks to have, or no attacking moves rather. So yeah, that's Celebi for you. Uh, the defensive sets generally fit on more bulky teams. Uh, Subseed fits on more, uh, you know, balanced teams. Uh, stuff with trapping. And these two fit on their respective kinds of offensive teams. Special and physical. So there's that. Now here comes Ments. Standard set is the most easy set to use is Mixed Mence because, like Mixed Tar, it's got a ton of amazing coverage and it hits hard, and it's really fast. So the standard is naive. You can definitely go plus special attack Rash if you like, but I think this is just the easiest to use. And uh, yeah, it hits hard, hits things super effectively, and it also has some alternatives. In addition to running a Rash Nature, you can also run Rock Slide over Dragon Claw for especially defensive Zapdos, which otherwise checks it pretty nicely. And you can run uh, more attack investment if you want your Brick Breaks to really sting Blissey. So that's definitely feasible. And yeah, you can also do stuff like, if you're running, uh, you can run Wish over, if you can make up coverage. Like if you have stuff like Cloyster and Celebi to make, to totally dominate Swampert, then you can totally run Wish over HP Grass and give your offensive team some much appreciated longevity. If you have Spikes, you can also run Roar and wear down something like a Blissey to where it's no longer going to be comfortable coming into Brick Break after the next round of Spikes, even if it's bold. So uh, you can just generally cause a lot of havoc. You can do stuff like Roar in Swampert and as it runs from HP Grass, and it's going to take more Spikes damage. And, you know, it's going to run from HP Grass, so it's going to take even more next time it comes in. And just generally good at causing havoc. Those are the options. Uh, you know, Hydro Pump is fun, but I wouldn't really recommend it. <laughs> as sad as that is. But, uh, yeah, because it's not really most crucial. Brick Break is a lot bi bigger because it actually hits Blissey and Snorlax. So, yeah, there's Mix. Here's uh, my favorite Pokemon, CB Mence. Requires Magneton. I have another video dedicated to why CB Mence is good. 
So I, you know, don't. If you're looking for further analysis, just go there. It's called "Why Salvage is the Best Choice Banner in Advance" or something. Should have put more hot takes and exclamation marks in the title and thumbnail. But yeah, you can uh, also go faster if you're afraid of stupid ass Jolly Hair across. And but you know, I, I like a little bit of bulk. So, and you can run Jolly. That is a viable alternative if you are afraid of you know, offensive calm minders. I don't like it personally, but you can. Again, more on that in that video. DD, this guy cleans up pretty hard. You can run HP EVs if you want him to switch into Heracross and stuff. You can run Special Defense if you want him to take Selby Psychics and maybe a weak Ice Beam. Uh, you can also run less attack investment and uh, a lot of, I think 204 is what people run. And you can run, uh, yeah, you, hell, you can even go below the Heracoon benchmark if you are not afraid of Suicune and are, you know, or Heracross and just want a little bit more bulk or a little bit more power. I, th I find Mensa's uh, with DD is starved for power as is because it needs to get Oko's, not 2 KOs like Band Mens. So, you know, I don't really love this, but this can, you know, survive weaker, like a bulky Gengar Ice Punch or a Jolteon HP Ice fairly easily or, uh, like even a bold blissy ice beam with sand sometimes you know it's not super dependable but yeah it can work so yeah you have uh, these options and as for moves you don't want to ever give up rock slide because rock slide is what separates mens from gara it means it is not walled by aerodactyl and uh, zapdos the 264 benchmark is the lowest you can go because this allows you to outrun jolteon and arrow after a dd and uh, the one thing you might change is Brick Break over Earthquake because this allows you to threaten to KO Blissey after a little bit of chip. I think it does like 84 to 99. And you Oko any T-Tar. Whereas earlier we said Max HP T-Tar can survive a plus one Mens Earthquake, but it will not survive Brick Break. So uh, there's that. You need support because, oh, the extra hit against Snorlax is nice too, so it doesn't barely leave your HP flying and blow you up. Instead, you just put it away. So that's nice. Thing is, you really need support against Jirachi and Metagross because you are now completely walled by them. But if you can pull it off, like with Magneton or a funky Snorlax, uh, like counter uh, for Metagross, and you know, you can T wave and trap a Jirachi, then yeah, go for it. So. Uh, there's that. You also won't be able to Oko Magneton from full health, more, uh, a bulky one, but what the hell. Anyway, so those are the three main ones, and finally, Wishments, very cool set, extremely fat, uh, can tank all sorts of stuff. Oh, as for these three, I'll go on defensive team, or sorry, offensive teams. Uh, CB and Mix can fit on more defensive teams as a way of providing them with pressure, but all of them are great on offense as well. Whereas this Wish variant is more used on balance. Uh, also, the DD Mens is supposed to set up on either Doug Trio or like a minus one Rock Slide from T-Tar and then clean up a weakened offensive team. So, anyway, this Wish variant is uh, purely supportive. It tanks physical attacks like No Tomorrow, spreads Toxic, Flamethrower. I mean, you're not going to be soloing stuff with it because of Refresh Waters, Milotic and uh, Swampert, as well as other waters like Natural Cure Starmie and uh, Rest uh, Suicune. Those guys kind of get in your way, but it can still be a very irritating Pokemon to deal with. You can run Toxic Flamethrower, which is a classic combination. You can, if you have a Magneton on your team, like a lot of Wishman's teams do, then you can just run physical attacks. Like uh, HP Flying Earthquake is just fine. HP Flying, Earthquake, or Brick Break even, honestly. EQ or Brick Break to you know, further mess with that. You can run Impish. Uh, brick Break lets you check T-Tar better in a one-on-one, -on -one. so if you've got Magneton, then I would definitely consider this set. Um, yeah, so you can do stuff like this, and it's just a very irritating set to deal with. It's hard to fit, but on certain balance teams, it does the trick. UD has some really nice ones alongside Steelix, which this thing is a wonderful partner to. can also be used on some uh, stall teams, but uh, stall or balance, that's the kind of style this thing fits on. So, that's Mens for you. And we are just getting started, but I'm going to go take my obligatory bathroom break because it's been an hour and 20 minutes. So, I will BRB 
enjoy the continued ambiance of this remix. I'm back. You were probably hearing the siren that's going off, which is... Who knows? I don't question it. Alright, so moving on. We were at Mance, now we're on Dugtrio. Thankfully, this Pokemon is simple. Standard set is used to trap as much as possible. It's uh, blazing fast, and it outruns plus one DD Tar and Starmie, so you're trapping most of the tier. So, I... Uh, with Jolly Nature, you gotta be careful because you're not okoing much from full, but against a team that's been chipped by spikes or just, you know, attacks, then Dugtrio cleans up really hard, and it's pretty simple. It's hard to switch in safely, but, you know, if you can come in on a T-Tar Rock Slide or, uh, or a DD, because like we mentioned at the beginning of the video, DD Tar doesn't really, can't really afford to run bulk anymore, then, yeah, you can uh, pull that off. You can uh, pull a similar trick against Mixtar if you switch into a Fire Blast. Uh, and, yeah, other than that, you got to be careful. Like, you can switch into most offensive Jirachis fairly safely and uh, kill back. But, yeah, that's uh, that's what Dugtrio does. And it is, uh, well, well regarded in what it does. So, that's this is the standard set. You can run Beat Up over Rock Slide. Uh, and the purpose of that is to do more damage to Blissey if your team is uh, has a lot of decent attack stats, like even something like Suicune and Zapdos, who you don't think of as physical attackers, they still have okay attack stats. So with six Pokemon, then you can dish out your, um, you can dish out damage uh, more than Earthquake, and you can't be countered, like it cannot use the move counter on you, because beat up is dark type. So, thus it is technically a special attack, and thus cannot be countered. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, it's either that or only the last hit gets countered, which is not enough to KO Dugtrio, I don't think. It's one of the two. Uh, but I, you know, usually if it's sand is up, then you're going to be two KOing Blissey with Jolly Earthquake anyway. So, yeah, beat up over Rock Slide is an option because Rock Slide kind of sucks. But sometimes it's okay, but the other, it's definitely the most expendable because you need Aerial Ace for Heracross and you need HP Bug for Celebi. So, please don't let this be one of those... Okay, I don't want to get copyrighted, so I'm gonna skip, because once I got uh, copyright stricken for using Richard E. Flat, or whatever the guy's name was, uh, one of his remixes by accident, so I don't know if Gilva Sunner is like one of those guys, but I'm gonna... Oh, no, 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 I don't want to use this either. This might be copyrighted. Oh, man. I don't think any of these remixes are yeah all of these are remixes but I don't want I don't want to use actual uh, battle music from the games so yeah none of that no I don't want to use anything from the soundtrack all right hyper potions give me a remix okay there's another ad in check for some sale or whatnot. Anyway, moving on. So, the other Dugtrio is slower. It is Spadef, and the purpose of this is to survive a Blissey Ice Beam and to a KO it, as opposed to Earthquaking, or beating up, and coming up short, and then dying, and then having your special attackers be, you know, screwed. So, 
Uh, you're going to lose out on the plus one DD tar in the Starmie, but you gain a lot of special bulk, so you can lift things like Zapdos, HP Grass, you know, in a pinch. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much the entire purpose. I mean, yeah, it does suck to lose to DD tar, but you can't just entirely rely on Dugtrio for DD tar, because that can go all sorts of wrong. <laughs> it's it's uh, not safe to switch Doug into T tar, like, hard most of the time. That So. You know, what happens if it just DDs twice as you switch it in something else? So, you're going to want a different check to it anyway. And this is as game-breaking as it gets. There's no more, impar more important target than Blissey for especially offensive teams. So, you need to have some uh, investment for it. So, oh yeah, Standard Doug and this Doug can both run Adamant. I think it's really good. It achieves KOs a lot more easily against healthy T-Tar and Metagross. And uh, it's leaves no room for anything against Blissey, but you can definitely uh, you know here then you're gonna be pretty slow and I'm personally okay with that I've run a very 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 slow Doug trio before but here you're still pretty fast if you're running a speedy Doug because you are uh, still way faster than you know even Gengar uh, or what Gengar commonly runs and you beat the base 100 so Jirachi is Celebi then you're still destroying those, so not a problem. So that's just an option, of course. Oh, also, if you are running uh, the HP the Max Speed Jolly HP Bug IVs, then use for defense because that lets you always survive a CB T-Tar Rock Slide. Some people make the mistake of using 248 Attack and 8 def or 8 HP, which also survives CB Tar Rock Slide, but you know, you can also just do it with four defense, so uh, that is the better spread overall, and Dark Shield can be strapped for power, so you don't want to be taking out of attack if you can help it, which here you can. So yeah, that's Doug for you. Uh, ena destroys and enables all kinds of stuff, which I'm sure you're familiar with if you know a little bit of advance. Uh, but you know, Zapdos and Blissey and Gengar are prime partners. As it removes just so much. Oh no, you got a peek at the other Pokemon we're going to be looking at. So where are we now? Oh, Suicune, okay. So here's the standard bold Suicune. Calm Mind Suicune has no weak, as an old net battle player once said, because after Calm Mind, it's electric and grass weaknesses. Both special attacks are nullified. So yeah, this thing can be kind of passive and kind of easily taken advantage of while sleeping, and you know, it's slow, but it can also be the most dangerous Pokemon in the tier. You know, everyone has gotten 6 would by lead Suicune at least once. So, uh, yeah, there's that. And Drawer, and for other Suicunes mainly, other Combine Suicunes. And Call My Wars against Jirachi as well. Roar is, you know, the main reason why Call My Bliss is not an effective Suicune counter at all. So, as for the speed EVs, then eight EVs used to be the standard just to outrun Jolly Marowak, you know, just in case, because it's only eight EVs. Now I would say do 16 EVs because that outruns max speed Machamp. So, uh, the defense, it's not going to make a difference at all. So, moving on, offensive Suicune. Uh, you go aggressive with, all right, another remix, good. Hydro Pump, uh, and you outrun, you can run more speed if you want. I just like some HP investment, but this outruns max speed T-Tar, and you run Hydro Pump because it hits really, really, really hard, and uh, of course Ice Beam for coverage against Celebi and Zapdos, and the last move could be a lot of things. Uh, HP Grass is good because it hits other waters, Roar is good for Calm Mind Wars, and uh, you know there's all sorts of options like Toxic to mess with Blissey, because Substitute Suicune has EV issues, which we'll get to, and... You can run Rest to also sit on Blissey, because uh, Toxic kind of makes Suicune sacrifice itself, but it's well worth it. And uh, then you can you can run a lot of stuff. You can probably run Protect, honestly, to uh, dodge explosions. But what I really like is Surf, because you know the last move can kind of feel blast sometimes. And what I really really hate is Hydro pumping something like a 30% Metagross and missing. You could just Surf. Surf hits really hard. But, and yeah, you could use it as your main stab, but Hydro Pump is just death against things like Snorlax, so uh, I would, if if you're going to run Surf, I would run it alongside Hydro. But yeah, uh, Offensive Suicune is fairly simple. You can't switch it into attacks, especially because 
it doesn't have so much, it has great natural bulk, but you know, you don't really want it eating a T-Tar Rock Slide in sand if it's not primed to sweep, or at least guarantee it's going to bust a big hole. You got to get a lot of value out of it with uh, the damage you're trading with it. So you got to play it aggressively yet carefully, you know, double it into that, t double switch it into that T-Tar instead of, you know, letting T-Tar come in for free and hit it you on the switch. You know, then, because this week at full HP is very dangerous, but when it's switching into an attack, then, you know, it's, it's already neutered because of sand. And it's easier to revenge kill, easier to bring down. Uh, this is actually why this Suicune is so dangerous as a lead, because you call mine in T-Tar's face and a lot of teams just get run over. So, there is that. And, yeah, so that's Offensive Suicune for you. Um, I, if you're running, if you're looking for the most common last move, I would say it's HP Grass or Roar. So... Uh, yeah, but I think Toxic and Surf and even Protect are good. You can run Substitute, but on this variant of Offensive Suicune, if you're really going to want Max Special Attack to just plow through things like Metagross and Jirachi and Specially Defensive Skarmory, you know, you really don't want to be cutting into that. So if you're going to run Sub on this set, you're running it to dodge explosions and leech seeds and toxics, not to sub uh, in Blissey's phase. I think sub Suicune is kind of dicey to beat Blissey in sand anyway. Uh, I think there's a better approach to doing that, which we'll get to, even with the one-on-one -on -one subs, because hydro accuracy and, you know, you keep getting chipped down and, yeah. Anyway, speaking of Suicunes that beat Blissey, uh, here's something similar. Uh, similar but different, because you don't have coverage, you're on a similar EV spread, but, uh, What's different about this one is that if Skarmory tries to phase, then it will get, you know, after a couple boosts, then Surf will just absolutely destroy it. So, uh, whereas this other set can struggle against Milotic Blissey stuff, then this set sets up all over them. And, uh, without a worry, and you can't be phased, can't really be chipped, doesn't mind taking a stray hit from something like Tyranitar because it can heal. I mean, you don't want to be relying on Rest Talk because... It can be unreliable because if you sleep talk without burning a sleep turn uh, when you switch, then you haven't burned any sleep turns. You're going to come back in and still have two sleep turns left. So let's say I use rest and then I use sleep talk and then I switch out. Then I have not burned any sleep turns effectively. I still have to sleep talk twice or I still have two turns of sleep left when I come back in, which makes it kind of hard to use, but it's matchup against defensive stuff that just can't touch it is incredible. Uh, defensive teams that rely on not only Roar, uh, or Skarmory to face it, but like Roar Moltres, suddenly dead in the water, pun intended. So, uh, yeah, the set is really nasty. And it can run this spread, you can, I wouldn't run much, uh, I wouldn't run faster, you know, slower if anything. But I think outrunning T-Tar is good, and having max special attack is good to really stick it to Skarm, and then you need some HP investment, so there you go. Anyway. Finally, sub call mine Suicune. So this is the one with, uh, you know, max HP for the 101 subs. Now the standard is Ice Beam, and I I just don't think this is reliable against Blissey and Sand. Yeah, it's nice against Milo, but it's it's just kind of dicey. You can either never have enough speed or enough special attack, and you need the max HP. But there are a couple ways. Yeah, while the set is sometimes really good, it's a little too hit or miss for me. However, there are some things you can do, or one thing in particular you can do that makes the set really nasty, and that is another UD invention, Rain Dance. So, weather clearing is fairly, fairly big in advance, it's getting more and more explored, and with this, then Suicune turns the tables on stuff like Blissey trying to stall it out in sand. I mean, never mind the extra boost to Surf, which makes it hit even harder, but uh, by clearing the weather, that's great team support you know, for a teammate like Snorlax, or just support for itself, because suddenly Blissey can't just seismic toss a million times as Suicune gets worn down from creating its own substitutes, and you can really mess with it, so, and of course T-Tar is not a good Suicune switch, so that makes it nice, and I think uh, this is a nice workaround to uh, some call mine Suicune's issues, so give it a try. Uh, so, uh, moving on, Snorlax. First of all, I want to mention EVs on Snorlax are complete nonsense. Uh, the, the only benchmark I would recommend on this set is this much attack minimum, because that KOs Bulkless Doug Trio. Uh, and the rest, this special defense investment is to avoid a 2-hit KO from plus 1 Hydro Suicune at full health, 
and I believe to be 4 hit KO'd by Mata Zapdos. Uh, but, you know, most of the time, Snorlax takes various assorted hits, so those benchmarks don't end up being too important. The Suicune one is nice, but it is a lot of EVs, and I like having a lot of attack on Snorlax, especially with Earthquake to one-on-one -on -one T-Tar, and to hit Metagross really hard on the Switch. So, but you want defense so you don't crumble. Oh, I didn't even realize I had uh, EVs left over. That's nice. So, oh, that's because I took him out of attack. Duh. Um... Yeah, I just wanted the next benchmark up. So this is a fine spread. I mean, anything works, really. You can run less defense and you know, a lot of attack. I like that, personally. You know, or you can go like this. Really, do calcs for what you like, or just move the sliders. The 12 speed is to outrun Paralyzed Aerodactyl. That scenario is very, very rare, but what the hell. And then some Snorlax creep on each other, and I know that some try to, you know, go all the way, like, to up here, around this... This area, you know, camera up, so, you know, it's your choice if you want to go up there or not, but I've personally never found uh, Snorlax Speed Creep to be too useful, so. Hell, I think you could get, use Zero Speed and get away with it, because, or even be better off for it, let's say, because you get more defense EVs, which can go a long way, so. Uh, yeah, generally, whatever, whichever of the spreads have been shown on screen just now are fine. So, and as for moves, then, you don't have to be stuck to any of them except self-destruct. Self-destruct is the big one. Uh, EQ is great, Shadow Wall is great, obviously the set is totally worthless against Skarmory, so you gotta have Magneton with it, or like CB Metagross or something. Uh, generally Mag or CB Gross is good. Generally Mag, so you can have a Metagross still, but uh, this is good. If you're trying to poke down Skarm with it, you can run Focus Punch, but I... Uh, you gotta be wary of Drill Peck Scarm, but you can hit it on the Switch. It's nice because it also completely destroys T-Tar on the Switch as opposed to Earthquake, so it's just a nice move to throw out. Problem is, you really don't want to be without Earthquake because then you are a Snorlax that is helpless against Jirachi. Hell, you're a Snorlax that is helpless against Magneton, and that really sucks. I've gone over this in the Advanced Focus Punch video, uh, but yeah, that's why I think uh, the spread... You Generally, I like uh, having a Pursuit Tar with this, and just not having Shadow Ball, because the benefits are really nice. Uh, if you have a Pursuit Tar and a Magneton, you can also run this set, which is really nice. Uh, Curse, so, you know, stuff like T-Tar Rock Slide doesn't really hurt, and your Earthquakes really sting. And, uh, your Boom is definitely killing stuff now. You can also mess with stuff like, uh, Counter. You can run Counter. Some people, like Vapakuno, even drop Body Slam. I'm not that kind of guy, but... Uh, I think it's fine. You can run Earthquake Counter depending on the support, you know, with uh, Snorlax, then the main things you have to be concerned about are uh, Magneton and Tyranitar. No, no, sorry, sorry. Skarmory and Tyranitar. But, sorry. Skarmory and Gengar, which means that you should be supporting it with Magneton, you know, and or Pursuit Tar, respectively. So, uh, use... Uh, adjust your moveset accordingly. And, um... Yeah, I think that's mostly it. I really think Earthquake is too good to go without, honestly. It, not being walled by T-Tar, Metagross, Jirachi, and even Magneton. I mean, it sucks when Snorlax has to blow up on Magneton because it loses to it one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you think, oh, Magneton, that's no big deal. That's just the Skarm killing machine. And then, you know, you think that, and then Magneton actually becomes really annoying, and you're just like, well, this sucks. So, EQ is really good. Try not to go without it. So yeah, then there's the classic Curse Restlax, which is passive and slow and needs a million and a half things of support, and EV spreads are even more up in the air. I think Impish is good on it because it means that uh, it's really hard to pressure with physical attacks, and you know then you have your special defense benchmark on top of HP, and the last move can be a lot. Shadow Ball, standard for Gengar, even though Will-O-Wisp still sucks, and then you're walled by T-Tar and Meta and Jirachi, so you need Dugtrio to KO a bunch of stuff, and, you know, with Earthquake, I think Earthquake is generally better, because then it just means you have to pursue Gengar, which is whatever. That can definitely be done. Uh, this Snorlax definitely appreciates weather clearing, and you're thinking, Pursuit, well, don't I have to run T-Tar? You can run Umbreon for that. Uh, and those teams that like to weather clear. We'll go over more of them later when we get to Umbreon and like Moltres. And uh, this Snorlax is actually a prime partner to that Rain Dance Suicune. Not official, okay. Uh, that Rain Dance Suicune we just saw. 
so there's that, and you can, uh, some players have also run HP Bug to surprise Leech Celebi, which is a common response to this set, and it also hits T-Tar super effectively, so, you know, good enough, and it's not completely blanked by Gengar, so you don't lose to a 7% Gengar, uh, because you couldn't touch it at all, so, uh, yeah, there's that, and, yeah, it's pretty much lax for you, you can run Careful, you can run Adamant, the EVs are really up in the air, so... Yeah, that's, uh, that's Lax. So, moving on. Jirachi. A bunch of great sets. Superachi. Here's a term you will hear thrown around. It means fast three attack call mine Jirachi. So, the this is the classic coverage for it. it. You know, Jirachi does not have to run HP Fire, so it can have a perfect speed IV, so it can run max speed and tie with all the Zapdos and Ments and Charizard you could possibly want. Oh, Flygon too. So this is the classic coverage, HP Grass Fire Punch. You can also throw Ice Punch in there. You can throw Thunder Punch, or not Thunder Punch, Thunder Bolt in there. Uh, some people even drop Psychic because uh, you don't want to give up HP Grass for T-Tar and Pert. You don't want to give up Fire Punch for Metagross and Magneton and uh, other Jirachi and Skarmory as well. Then, but you really want that Mence Oko, and I will say that Mence Oko is very valuable. Flygon as well. So sometimes you can run this, I mean, sucks to not Oko Gengar anymore, but it's still a good set. You can toy, if you feel like you're going to dug T-Tar and you know you're going to psychic your way through Swampert that is either, you know, mono, so surf only, not hurting you, or offensive and rash, meaning it's taking an absolute ton from plus one psychic, then yeah, you can ditch HP Grass and run something like this. You can run a uh, psychic, or I, you can run bolt beam coverage or pseudo bolt beam coverage. You know you're gonna hate like uh, you're not gonna love Magneton especially and uh, Metagross, but you know other Jirachi can be kind of contentious. But the bigger hit against things like Suicune and Moltres and Charizard can be really valuable. So yeah, Superachi has a lot of options. Pick according to your team and your preferences. Uh, you can also run Lumberry on it, which is potentially useful because uh, Magneton and Zapdos like to Thunder Wave it, but Leftovers is generally better. It lets you have a chance against uh, non-T-Wave Blissey in Sand, and uh, just generally good for shrugging off hits like a Choice Bandit Salamence's HP Flying. You can heal that off in a few turns, or at least make it like it wasn't such a big deal after a few turns, whereas without that, it sticks and you struggle to actually switch Jirachi into attacks, which is a shame because Jirachi has such great typing in bulk. So, that's Super Jirachi. Wish Protect Jirachi, this can also have Toxic over Body Slam, in which case you remove Sassy and just make it calm. But, uh, yeah, this is a good set. It checks an absolute ton. Uh, you probably want to back up against things like Zapdos with it, because whenever Zapdos Thunder Waves this Jirachi set, it becomes a lot more vulnerable to full paralysis because it needs to wish and protect to stay healthy. But, yeah, against offensive teams, this set is an absolute demon. It's hard to kill, it's hard to switch into, and uh, this EV spread, well, first of all, 36 defense is to survive Dug Trio at full health, but 76 defense is to survive plus one, so DD or CB Salamence at full health. So, by extension, like CB Metagross and uh, CB or DD Tar, etc. So, you can body slam them. If you have Toxic, you can Toxic them. You can stay in Fire Punch. Uh, you can basically, if you have a wish, if you have a wish thrown up and you know they're going to attack you, you can just fire off an attack so you're not just being passive. And you heal up most of it and you peel in sand so you can protect from more leftovers. And it's just an absolute devil of a set. Uh, you can also go with a more physically defensive approach if you like to shrug off Dug Trio more easily. But I think this is generally fine. Yeah, this thing uh, is really nice against Dug because you B slam. Hopefully, you have a roughly 60% chance of beating it because it can crit you, but you can also crit it. And then there's also the 60% para, so call it 60%. And uh, yeah, it's really nice. Of course, Toxic is just a pain. But yeah, and this set doesn't love Refresh, but it's also great team support because Wish is Wish. So, Subcall Mine, great Pokemon because it totally sets up all over Blissey and is protected from revenge killing and... Coverage can be, you know, up in the air. I think Psychic T-Bolt is generally safe. Psychic Fire Punch is good. Some people like Ice Punch, Thunderbolt. So it's really up to you. Uh, some people even run Fire Punch, HP Grass. Um, so really depends, but it's fast. It, you can tweak the spread. You can make it slower, give it more bulk, more special attack. But yeah, it's nice to have a sub, hide behind it, start boosting in face of, like, weaker special attackers. 
and uh, and Blissey, and you can overwhelm all sorts of teams because it's fast against offense and it's bulky and resilient against stall. So generally all around good poke. Now since you are creating subs, then you do again have to be careful with how you, uh, just checking to make sure it's not an actual Pokemon track, uh, you do have to be careful with how you, um, uh, how you switch it in, because if you're trying to create subs and take your own health away, then you are going to want to start as close to full health as you possibly can, so there's that, but at the same time, it's still just a generally great Pokemon, especially because it's immune to Toxic, so you can pivot into that, for example. So, uh, Wish Call Mind Jirachi, great set. You can tw you can make it fast, you can make it bulky, whatever you like. You can tweak the coverage just like you can with Sub Call Mind. Psychic Fire Punch, I think, is the most classic, but... You know, anything is fine. Uh, you switch into attacks really nicely because you're just so bulky. You support your team with Wish. You're a Calm Mind Sweeper, not stopped at all by Blissey. It's wonderful. So yeah, this set is fairly straightforward. You know, this set fits on... Superachi fits on more offensive teams. Just like I should have mentioned, uh, Defensive Kuhn, then it is a bulky, balanced sort of team. Offensive Suicune, offensive teams. Pro Kuhn, that kind of thing. Sub Call Mind, Suicune, then same deal and uh, more offensive stuff, or potentially balanced stuff if you're going for the weather change approach. Yeah, Dark Trio fits on everything. <laughs> it really does. Offense, defense, uh, mostly offense though. And Utility lacks, offensive teams, Curse lacks on, or Curse Rest lacks rather, because Utility can also run Curse, then that is also on bulkier teams. Uh, centered around it, which I really don't like, but yeah. Super Rachi, offensive stuff. This stuff, uh, Wish Tech, bulky team. Sub Call Mind, bulky or, you know, bulky offense team. Wish Call Mind can be balance, generally going to be some sort of balanced bulky offense approach similar to Sub Call Mind. So yeah, fairly simple set, uh, really good team support as well as an offensive threat. So, uh, mix set, this is a set I came up with a couple of years ago and I really like it. It's a very aggressive Jiraji set because it spreads para and it potentially dynamic punches two of its main checks in T-Tar and Blissey and its horrible accuracy is somewhat offset by body slam paralysis meaning that even if you miss then you know they can still full para not to mention Jirachi is a resilient little bugger so one miss is usually not the end of the world and of course you pile on con uh, body slam paralysis with dynamic punch confusion then you've got the fire grass coverage to harass as much as possible so you scare out Swampert and you hit Skarm really hard and that lets you annoy the rest of the team you know careful around Gengar once they realize you don't have psychic but yeah, the set can also have different uh, moves. You can throw in Ice Punch, you can throw in Thunder for Paralysis, although then you don't pair ground types like Flygon, but you know with Ice Punch that might not be so big a deal for you. Uh, and you can also run uh, Psychic, of course, uh, for unsuspecting Gengar, who think, oh, Body Slam, all right, so that set, I can wall it and burn it with Gengar, and bam, dead. So, uh, that's your call, but yeah, the EV spread is nothing special. I just like a lot of special attack to really scare out Skarm and Pert. And, uh, yeah, then attack. You generally don't need more than this, I don't think. And then the speed investment is uh, standard, can be more. Uh, probably shouldn't be less, but I, it could be less if you really wanted. So, could also make it bulkier if you'd like. Uh, so, yeah, finally, oh, here's, uh, I didn't label this one. This is CB Jirachi, which is entirely unique. It's not a classic choice bander because it doesn't, like, dish out a ton of damage itself. But first of all, it's got the surprise factor of HP fighting, which drops T-Tar, which is usually great against Jirachi one-on-one, -on -one, and it really smacks Blissey hard. So again, fighting coverage is good against Jirachi's common switch-ins, and you know, Shadow Ball and for Gengar, and Body Slam paralysis, and surprisingly strong with max investment and a choice band boost. So even something like a T-Tar is not gonna like Para, and stuff like Mence and Zapdos aren't gonna like the damage. So and, but the main thing is Doom Desire, which hits two turns after being used, like Future Sight, and there is no other move like this in Advance OU, because nothing actually uses Future Sight because it's bad, but Doom Desire is typeless, and it is powerful, and it uses the defense stat of the Pokemon that switches in, so you can set up all sorts of uh, scenarios. I mean, the whole idea is that you use Doom Desire, you switch out, and then you switch to another Pokemon that is gonna attack, so the opponent is taking two attacks on one turn. It, that is incredible offense. That said, it is niche, it's hard to fit, it's vulnerable to trappers, etc. But its upside is absolutely, absolutely enormous. So yeah, I was not going to not mention 
my beloved CB Jirachi. So, uh, yeah, that's Jirachi for you. So, moving on, Starmie. Offensive Starmie is the offensive uh, team killer. It outspeeds and Oko's so much. I mean, teams with Titar, Mens, Gyarados, those guys just get smacked. Then you got a Magneton, that also dies. Snorlax gets worn down super quick in sand. Metagross can't take two Hydros, has to kill itself in order to actually check Starmie. So yeah, Offensive Starmie is dangerous. It's got some options. If you don't like Spin, you can run Psychic for a safer hit on Gengar and Heracross. You can run HP Grass if you don't want a Hydro uh, Pump Swampert, which I agree totally sucks. Or you can even run Surf because, again, Hydro Pumping a 30% Magneton is the worst feeling in the world. So uh, Surf is definitely nice, and you can finish off Weakened Swamperts as well. Uh, I think all of them have merit. Rapid Spin is nice, but you can't rely entirely on Offensive Rapid Spin Starmie to deal with your Spikes problem, so uh, you can... I, I think most teams are better off dealing with Spikes teams elsewhere and uh, focusing on Starmie's strengths, but Rapid Spin is the standard. And of course, it's got that beautiful coverage, which is only walled by... Oh no, Lantern. Anyway. So, then there's Defensive Starmie, which has Recover, which has 32 PP in advance, which makes it really resilient alongside Natural Cure. It's got Spin. Doesn't do a ton of damage itself, and it can be taken advantage of with how passive it can be, but it can also be really irritating sitting on opposing teams. So, the last move can be Psychic for Gengar, it can be Thunder Wave for support. I think either of those are fine, uh, but I wouldn't mess with anything else, really. T-Wave is probably the safest, because it can really cripple things like Jirachi and Zapdos. Alright, my stupid mic cut out again. I'm hoping not too much of that got lost. But just to cover my bases, um, yeah, so, uh, Wish Call Mine is also used on Sub Call Mine teams. Mixed and CB, these are just offensive team Pokemon. So, uh, yeah, so now here's Starmie, offensive, the offense killer, because, uh, Hydro, it occurs so many Pokemon on offensive teams. Uh, your Gera, Titar, Mence, and then Metagross gets 2 KO'd by Hydro, has to explode itself to survive against it, or to actually take it out. Uh, and then there's Magneton, which also gets pretty much o code and then Snorlax, which gets worn down famously quickly in Sand. So yeah, Starmie devours offensive teams. And uh, its coverage is only resisted by the Mighty Lantern. So, I would also... Uh, advise on a different fourth move. Rapid Spin is the standard, and obviously getting rid of Spikes is never a bad thing, especially against a more offensive team with some, like a more suicidal Spiker, like a Cloister that blows up quickly, and then you can just permanently remove their Spikes. But in longer games, then this Starmie will not be sufficient Spikes protection, so I would recommend dealing with that uh, style of team throughout with your other teammates and focus on Starmie's strengths. So the other moves it can use are HP Grass, and you think, well, why do you need to hit Swampert hard? Hydro already hits it hard. And, you know, Hydro pumping a Protect Swampert really, really, really sucks. Accuracy and doesn't do enough, and you get two a KO by Earthquake, or, you know, potentially PP stalled by switching, and uh, it's ugly. HP Grass is just safe. It also hits Lantern super effectively, so that's the kind of adaptation Starmie needs to make. But seriously, uh, HP Grass Starmie is great against Swampert. And you Oko offensive variants, so... Uh, then there's Psychic, which is great against Gengar, so it can't just swallow a Hydro Pump and T-Bolt you back or explode, and you destroy Heracross as well. And finally, I like Surf, because there's nothing worse than having to Surf, or er, having to Hydro a 30% Metagross or Magneton. So, uh, yeah, there is that. Now, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on my stupid mic in case it keeps cutting out. So that's Starmie for you, now Defensive Starmie, Offensive Starmie on Offensive Teams. I mean, no, Offensive Starmie can be a good cleanup Pokemon on Defensive Teams as well, uh, especially because the big five of Titar, Skarm, Bliss, Pert, Gar can often play, you know, five on six until it's time to bring out Starmie and win the game. But it's also very common on Offensive Teams, so Offensive Starmie is just a menace. So Defensive Starmie is entirely relegated to defensive, bulky, balanced stall teams, and 32 PP... Uh, recover is really nasty for longer games, especially alongside Natural Cure, and it's uh, it can spin spikes and it can just sit around, and be a pain, drain the opponent's PP nicely. And Thunder Wave support is nice for big hitters like Choice Band Titar. 
So, uh, the spread I use is not the standard. Most people like defense. A Thunder Wave doesn't have to be Thunder Wave, it can be Psychic. But I like uh, Thunder Wave, I think just because you can handle Gar with T Wave. T Wave ruins Gengar. You can run Pursuit if you're really that worried about it, and Surf still smacks it nicely. So, uh, there's that. Now, I like this spread because not only does this spread live a T-Tar Crunch and the ensuing Sand, so T-Tar cannot effectively um, Pursuit Trap you, but I also like it because it survives a Timid Max Special Attack Gengar Thunderbolt with one layer of Spikes Up and Sand. It does less than 81%. So, you can, in that one-on-one, -on -one, which is a very plausible scenario where sand is up and you've take stepped on a spike so you're at 87.5 percent and you need to take less than 81 percent then that uh gengar's t-bolt will not kill you with sand so you can uh yeah you can do that so it is uh yeah i like that and then the remaining evs go into special attack i mean i'm sure you could do more if you wanted to be super safe in those scenarios but the remaining evs go into special attack to uh have a higher chance of two koing pursuit tar through lefties i think it's something like 85 percent right now but uh yeah you know just having some cushion there and uh the speed investment is to outrun adam and doug trio you know you could go a little lower if you're brave enough or you could you know go more special offense more special attack whatever but uh, this is the general gist, and those are the benchmarks you should be considering when you EV your defensive Starmie. So, moving on. Arrow. Arrow is simple. Offensive teams, and mostly bulky Spikes teams, uh, or offensive Spikes teams as well, they like him because he's tied for the fastest thing in the game, and he cleans up everything really, really hard. You know, uh, preys on Calm Minders that have their defense unprotected, especially once they've been chipped once... Uh, once they've taken damage from spikes, damage that is stuck thanks to Sandstorm, and he just comes and picks things off. His hidden power is Flying for Stab or Bug for Celebi. Especially nice because Celebi against HP Flying Arrow can kind of stay in and scout what move it's going to lock itself into by recovering. And it's especially good for preventing a Celebi from a bulkier Celebi from passing boosts because they can live HP flying, but living HP Bug from Arrow is tough. I mean, living Bug from Dugtrio is already tough enough, but yeah. Uh, and Bug is also nice because it hits Celebi and T-Tar in the same move, so T-Tar cannot predict you trying to hit the Celebi and switch it and Pursuit Trap you, so you're hitting T-Tar really hard. And the bonus hit against Claydol is nice. So, Arrow's massive speed is amazing because it outruns Starmie, it outruns uh, even Jolly DD Tar, so you are you have a lot of safety nets against Pokemon Dangerous for offensive teams. And, you know, he just cleans up really hard, so uh, remember... Uh, when you run HP Flying, then these are going to be your IVs because you need the 31 speed, and for HP Bug, it's this. So, yeah, uh, HP Bug is a lot easier if you have a Pursuit Tar, so Gengar can't come in on you safely. HP Flying is admittedly nice for hitting Swampert and Gengar in the same move, so it, it depends on your team structure. So, uh, those are things to keep in mind when you're building your team with Arrow. And yeah, he's a great cleaner, uh, appreciates spikes, appreciates. Uh, teammates who break down physical walls, so, you know, Magneton is easy, Explosion, Metagross, Mixed, T-Tar, and Mence variants, so, uh, stuff like that. And yeah, he's pretty simple. This is the arrow set you're going to be facing 99.9% .9 of the time, maybe a little less, because this set, sub Leechee, is just for use on SD Pass Celebi teams, because, you know, what it, the idea is, uh, you know, most of the Pokemon that Celebi passes... Uh, it's Swords Dance 2 is they're going to have to boost their speed themselves manually. You know, Agility, Metagross, DD, Tar, Manscara. But with Arrow, it's already the fastest Pokemon, so it doesn't have to boost its speed. So you get the plus one attack, you get the plus two attack, and you just immediately are ready to start wrecking everything because you're faster than it. And you could sub down for a third attack boost to Lychee Berry. And furthermore, uh, a lot of people play around Arrow by abusing what move it's locked into, but with this set, uh, you are able to switch moves. So you can't just say, oh, he's locked into Rock Slide or Double Edge, I can just throw my Metagross at it. And because, you know, now you're taking a plus two or possibly even plus three Earthquake. And uh, Sub is also nice for scouting that switch, so you're dishing out hits behind a Sub, less prediction. Uh, of course, this is entirely predicated on the fact that you're receiving SD boosts from Celebi. 
Now, I'm not saying that this set is entirely reliant on Selby passing SD boosts to it to work, but you are... I mean, in late game scenarios against frailer teams, yeah, it can work. But by and large, you are going to need Selby on this team, on your team, to really justify this set. This set is not good enough against uh, enough teams on its own, like Choice Band is, to justify using it without Celebi. Like, yeah, if you got a late game against a frailer team that you don't really need an SD uh, boost to break through, then yeah, you can just throw an arrow and start using, start switching your moves and hitting everything hard and cleaning up. But against bulkier teams, you are going to be absolutely useless, so you need that the potential to SD pass. So Anyway, Choice Band is the standard, but Sub Leechy is worth mentioning. Anyway... So, moving on, Claydol. This is the Pass EG Claydol, except Explosion because Refresh died out because it was passive and bad, and Explosion turns Claydol from a terrible Pokemon. Er, non Explosion Claydol is terrible, Explosion Claydol is really good. So, this is the standard bulky spread. Uh, you 2 a KO Pursuit Tar trying to trap you. The special attack, and by not running minus speed, then you are able to. Uh, by not running minus speed, you are able to outspeed common pursuit tar variants. I mean, you can run some creep, you can run, you know, somewhere in the 190s. And the thing is with this Claydol is that you're gonna want to run more and more speed, but this is the general, if you want your Claydol to be bulky and to take hits, then this is the spread you run. But, you know, as soon as you start wanting to run faster, I mean, you can do a little bit of creep, like around here, or a little bit more. But the faster and faster you go, the faster you go from the bulky set, to the uh, fast set, which is the exact same, I, I don't know why I changed the order of the moves, uh, but it's the exact same set, but just really fast, so uh, at this point, you know, it's gonna, it's functioning like a Swampert, an offensive Swampert, because it's using its typing and natural bulk to take hits, not investment, so you are just, and you open up new opportunities with the speed, so with a max attack, you're always two at KOing, uh, Pursuit Tar, and 249 speed is really good. You outrun Cloisters, max speed T-Tars, a lot of Suicunes, a lot of Zapdoses, the bulky ones, a lot of Suicunes, even the offensive ones, and uh, it's really nice. And uh, just, oh, offensive Swampers, of course, even Endeavor, and you know, Claydol's got a deceptively good speed stat. So yeah, you gotta, you have a lot of opportunity here. Uh, if you have something like a Pursuit Tar to deal with Gengar, and you don't want to be uh, psychicing it, then you can trade this in for Rock Slide, and you know, but it's not really that important, and Psychic is actually nice for dealing with Breloom. So, and yes, you can go further and go Jolly. Now, the one thing about this is that its attack stat is not that high, so you are not guaranteed to, to a KO Pursuit Tar through Leftovers, which is why you want to keep it as close to max as possible, but the speed is really nice. You're outrunning even Jolly Breloom, you're outrunning Adam and Heracross, max speed modest Suicune, so, uh, yeah, you can run this as well, and it's quite good, so... I like Adamant, but Jolly is also really nice. So, especially with spikes to help make up for the loss in attack against Pursuit Tar. So, there's that. And that's Claydol for you. So, these are the sets you should be running. Anything else is just a waste. Refresh Doll is... I know some people, like the, the stall fanatics, they go, Oh, Refresh Doll is good because you sit on... No, it's, it's passive and it's exploitable, and I really, really hate it. So, Explosion makes Claydol worthwhile. So, moving on, Magneton. Now, you may think, how does Magneton have four sets? And they're not really different. You know, at its core, Magneton has Thunderbolt, maybe a Hidden Power, and that's all it really needs to exist. But I wanted to highlight the different ways it's played. So, Magnet is, if you're really trying to kill Skarm no matter what, and you want to have max uh, special attack, so you can have as high a chance of beating as possible. And now you decide, am I going bulky or fast? Bulky, uh, so you don't necessarily lose to HP ground. If you're going fast, then you can just outspeed, uh, you can go max speed, or you can just outspeed uh, max T-Tar, and, you know, pump a little bit of bulk if you want, but, you know, going faster is generally nicer for things like offensive Vaporeon and whatnot. So you can run either that, and your choice of HP fire or grass, which would also actually mean you can run less speed. If you're running HP fire because you can't run the max speed IV. Oh no, this uh, Insane in the Rain doesn't like his music being used in monetized videos, so I gotta skip over to this. It's a shame, because, uh, yeah. So HP fire, not fighting. And... 
Yeah, so here's, uh, so there's this, and if you're running HP Grass, you may as well just go max speed. Skip. And you can run a little bit of bulk to help your odds against Starmie at full health or something. And uh, so your choice with Magnet is either max speed or bulk, uh, So which also helps you survive Starmie. So you can go uh, 240 HP and just go, should be this, 240 HP and then a little bit of speed. Uh, so you're, if Skarm is out speeding you at this point, it's 100% dying to uh, Magnet Thunderbolt. That's the general idea. It's 100% dying to Magnet Thunderbolt, so you don't have to get, worry about giving up three layers, and two layers is not that bad. Uh, and with 240, then you're also surviving Starmie Hydro, not comfortably, but you know you don't have to be in absolute 100% pristine shape for it to happen. So you have that, and then you, uh, yeah, because a special defensive Skarm can still live a Magnet Thunderbolt. It's a very low chance, but it has a chance. But if it's starting to invest in speed, it's not it doesn't have the bulk to do that anymore. So you can also do this spread I was toying with, and uh, which gives you a few more speed EVs. This still out. This still survives Adamant HP Ground Skarm. So you can do this, and you have a couple more speedy beasts to really stick it to Skarm. And, you know, that's fine. I think there was something even more optimal than this, actually, but this was what I wound up on, I think. And it was fine because uh, you get a few more speedy beasts, so Skarm, either... You're well-equipped against uh, the bulky Skarms, uh, and you lose tanking ability against uh, Starmie and whatnot, but it's not as important, so this might be the better one overall. So you can use that. And uh, yeah, so those are your choices. And for the last moves, you know, Thunder Wave is generally safe because it annoys Jirachi uh, a lot more than attacks. And then you can run Toxic to mess with Blissey or, you know, Protect for Choice Banders. I think Protect is generally safe. Um, I think it's, this set is generally too... No, you don't run that spread. Don't click on the deck stuff. Uh, it will generally misguide you. Like, if you're running a... Uh, Pokemon with a physical hidden power, and you click on the deck spread, it's going to make you hasty. Like, if you run an HP bug, dug trio, or arrow, the, and you click on the 252 attack, 252 speed thing that the dex that recommends, then, uh, or the that showdown recommends, it's going to give you a hasty nature because it thinks that hidden power is a special attack, like it is in later generations. So, you got to be careful with that. So, yeah, uh, you can run sub if you're running a faster, timid variant. But, yeah, so those are your options for... Magnet Mag. And then for sub, dedicated sub T-Wave, like the sets that go well with, um, the sets that go well with, what's it called? Leech Celebi, because you then sub-stall Metagross, which is nice. Uh, then those generally want to be timid for that purpose, and at that point you're also outspeeding Skarmory. So then you have the choice, uh, or yellow scarm rather. So then you have the choice of either just going max speed and saying, all right, I'm not going to face HP ground or bulk, giving yourself some bulk for HP ground, or you can uh, give yourself some bulk for jolly HP ground, which I think is around here. So you're not really hitting very hard, but yeah. And then you can really go extreme if you have HP fire and you can run this ridiculous spread that uh, outruns, uh, you don't outrun you only outrun Skarm, but this survives Fortress Earthquake, so you can 2 KO it with HP Fire without being left in the dust. Personally, I prefer to just HP Fire Fory, and if it uh, takes me out, I just finish it off with a Pursuit T-Tar in the back, but if you don't have a Pursuit T-Tar alongside your mag, then you might want this spread. I don't love it, but you... Um, I don't love it, but you have the... What's it called? At least you now have longevity, so you have lefties alongside your max HP set, which also helps switching into Zapdos and you know, surviving Starmie, and switching into Choice Banded attacks because Magneton does have resists to uh, most physical moves, so most Choice Banded attacks. So, you know, HP Flying, Double Edge, Rock Slide, Meteor Mash. Although Meteor Mash uh, you're going to beat anyway because of the quad resist, but the other ones are big. So yeah, this uh, the spread is kind of nuts, but you know, for some teams it is preferred. So then Protect is pretty much the exact same thing as uh, the subset in terms of EVs, except you, if you don't have sub, then you don't necessarily need the speed 
to outrun uh, Metagross because you're not going to be this subset is best against alongside Leech Celebi for Metagross shenanigans completely removing it without it taking anything with you if possible so if you're not doing that then you don't need the speed so you can just go all out bulk and uh, you can actually run a modest nature and you can go with the bulk for uh, Fori and you can run you know whatever amount of speed you know pleases you uh, you know, you can outrun Milotic or whatever, and you can still have some bulk left over, so you're killing, you're killing fast Skarm and living it, and, you know, you're not going to be killing bulky Skarm, but at least you'll be outspeeding it and 2 KOing it, so you still uh, limit it to two layers if it chooses to go for a second layer on you, so something like this would be fine for this variant, and you run, uh, if you're running Lefties Protect, then you want to run Toxic, so... With Magnet, the Toxic Protect is also fine on Magnet. It's just Thunder Wave is just generally more abusable. And it can still be used here, but generally I think Toxic Protect with lefties, then you want Toxic. So, uh, there we have that. And finally, Salic. This one is specifically for surviving Starmie. And, uh, well, you also get to HP Grass Dugtrio, which is nice. You're not going to kill it more often than not, but you might put it into range for where something... Like, if it took any damage switching into your T-Tar or something, then it's dead. And it can switch out, but then you can T-Wave whatever comes in. You can keep your Magneton for death, for death Fodder, whatever you like. And you can, uh, you of course, endure against Starmie, and that's a big one considering how badly we just said that Starmie destroys offense. So, uh, that's Magneton for you. Moving on, Milo. Simple, Toxic Refresh, this is the standard set. You can run Ice Beam, you can run Light Screen, you can run whatever you like, but this is the standard for a reason. It doesn't fear having its use completely ruined by opposing Toxics, and you Toxic everything else, and you have a good Stab Surf, and you wall mixed attackers, and that's what Milotic does. End of. Very simple. Uh, offensive Milotic is fairly unexplored. I think it's got a lot of potential because it's just as strong as Starmie. It has Recover. It's unexpected. And it has Hypnosis, which sucks, but it can change the game like nothing else. So you can do that, or you can run HP Grass for other waters, or you can run Hydro Surf or Hydro Toxic, whatever. Uh, Office of Milo is very unexplored. You can also run Modest feasibly, because even with Modest, it's quite fast. I mean, look at that speed. That's really nice. They can go down to uh, Timid Vaporeon or something and you know, give it some Defense EV so it doesn't auto-die to Doug, but, and uh, Physical Ments. But yeah, that's the general idea, and unexplored, worthwhile. But yeah, Milotic is very simple. Uh, this Milotic is used on defensive teams, and um, offensive Milo would be used on offensive spikes teams. I think it really needs spikes, but with those spikes, it's really dangerous. Uh, as for uh, Claydol, then it is used on generally like bulky offense teams and spikes teams, both variants. Actually, no, on offense teams, then it runs the offensive spread exclusively, whereas on bulky teams, it can still run this spread, but it can also run the fast spread. Whereas Mag, you know, most of this is just preference, whatever you like. Uh, Salic is only really used on physical offense teams that are just absolutely rocked by Starmie and, like, Charizard and stuff. Moltres, uh, keep it simple. Timid Moltres is the standard, but I think and hope that's dying out because Timid Moltres completely falters against offensive Calm Mind, Jirachi, and Celebi, which I think is just unacceptable. So I like Modest Overheat to just completely destroy them. And uh, Roar is nice, but I, you know, the, all these moves are important. So I think Roar is more of a luxury. You know, with Spikes up, then you can just mess with Blissey with Will-O-Wisp and Spikes and Sand anyway, so it's not too big a deal. And uh, yeah, it's nice, but nothing crucial. Now, if you're not afraid of Offensive Calm Mind, Jirachi, and Celebi, like let's say you have a Blissey, then yeah, fine. You can run Roar and you can keep Roar so you can phase Offensive Calm Mind, Celebi. But... At the same time, uh, it's team dependent, I suppose. In any case, I don't think Timid is worth it anymore. You know, you're not outspeeding, you know, 200 speed neutral tar because that doesn't exist, and you're only outrunning terrible stuff like Jolly Heracross. So yeah, if you're terrified of that, then yeah, go for it. But I think Modest is much much better. The power is noticeably different uh, when you HP Grass a healthy Swamper and it drops versus when it lives comfortably. Now this second, uh, so this Moltres set is used on uh, Spikes teams with Sand. Very, very powerful Pokemon on them. Switches into Metagross, scares it out with Threat of Oko, harasses everything with Will-O-Wisp and the Stab Fire plus HP Grass combo. 
So, uh, Sunny Day, this is for weather clearing teams, so we talked about those with Snorlax and Suicune. This set, I mean, the EV spray can be whatever, I just, I think it really doesn't matter, and power is generally nice, and uh, I haven't really found any calcs that bulk would help too much with, so we're just going to stick with this, but it can, you can run more bulk if you like. You can run Timid, too, if that floats your boat. And yeah, like, Neutral Mixed Mens is not really around either, and... I mean, yeah, DD Mints, you might want to will o -Wisp first. You can just run some speed EVs, though, because DD Mints should be going down to this speed anyway. It's just not worth it. Modest is too good, in my opinion. So, yeah, this set it pretty much exists to bait in T-Tar, burn it, and then Sunny Day, and, you know, stick around with Morning Sun and remove T-Tar sand, thus clearing the field for your Snorlax and Suicune. Cool. Simple. Uh, Heracross. This is the Salic Heracross, which subs down to Swarm Range for Nuclear Megahorns, while also getting a Salic boost and outrunning the entire tier because it's fast enough to outspeed Jolteon and Arrow at plus one, and it's Swarm boost and potentially Sword Stance boost and Megahorns slice through everything, and it's wonderful. Now on Salic Heracross, or on Salic, or sorry, on Magneton offense teams, and this set can run Rock Slide, and uh, because you've got Magneton removing Skarm. But by running Focus Punch, then you remove the need for Magneton because you're going to smack Skarm yourself. And, you know, when you're subbing down to Swarm range, then your uh, boosted Megahorns, your super boosted Megahorns, in fact, are going to be functionally just as good as Rock Slide most of the time. So this gives you a lot more flexibility in fitting it on a team because it does not need Magneton. Whereas if you use Rock Slide, you do need Magneton. So up to you. If you, don't, if you have a Magneton on the team, then yeah, sure, just use Rock Slide. But if you want to fit ha this kind of Heracross set on a very fast-paced offensive team, like the ones Austin Matitos has found success with, then go nuts, but, uh, yeah. All right, four attacks. This one... Oh, I still have the choice pin on it. <laughs> Whoops. So, yeah, this is a four attack set, which is simple. It does not have Swarm. It has Guts, so Heracross does not ruin it. Uh, and on this set, I think, actually, you run HP Ghost. Yeah. I uh, copy-pasted the choice pin set. Whoops. So, yeah, this four attacks Heracross set is very nice. It has Leftover, so it's not getting uh, chipped by Sand. Uh, so you can't just protect and wait for it to die, and it's really hard to deal with because Focus Punch slams Scar, Megahorn slams everything, Rock Slide coverage, and you have HP Ghost for Gengar. Of course, Gengar can't really hurt you because he doesn't want to burn you, and if he's going to boom on you, he's going to boom on you anyway. So sometimes I do like Brick Break on it uh, because it is good for a harder, safer hit against Snorlax, and you know you beat Magneton one-on-one -on -one when you can't Focus Punch it, and you know, that sucks to not have. And uh, you obviously don't risk a miss against Titar and Blissey. So yeah, Brick Break is good, but HP Ghost is also nice. But nowadays, I think Brick Break is generally safer. So uh, yeah, you can also run some bulk on it. You can go down to you know somewhere like this HP, and it makes a nice difference. Heracross can barely live uh, Psychics a lot of the time, so HP investment can go a long way, be a big game changer. But yeah, this is a simple Heracross set. Heracross is synonymous with offense, uh, so... Stick this guy on an offense team and uh, let him loose. And Choice Band is just the more extreme version of this because it has higher risk but also higher reward. Choice Band Focus Punch has a 25% chance to Oko Skarmory. It is max HP Skarmory. Uh, so, you know, Yellow Skarm just drops. But uh, max HP Skarm, as, pff, killing it is a beautiful feeling. CB Megahorn rips through even resists. Rock Slide is nice. Brick Break is definitely nicer to have. You don't want to be locking into CB HP Ghost. But yeah, uh, CB Megahorn is just delightful. As long as there's no Scarm in the picture, your move is pretty much always Megahorn. Um, I guess, you know, if you think a Moltres or Charizard is coming in, then you would Rock Slide. But other than that, Megahorn everything. Megahorn the Mence, Megahorn the Zapdos. You know, just because you don't want to Rock Slide into a Swampert or a Water or something. What a waste. Just Megahorn. You know, you don't want to let Metagross come in for free. Spam Megahorn. And honestly, I like Swarm on CB Hera because it gets chipped by sand a lot, so you'll find it at low HP, and that gives you one last nuke. And let me tell you, a, a swarm guts, or sorry, a swarm choice band mega horn is just a thing of wonder. Uh, but guts is generally safer. You know, I I don't like CB Hera taking status. I don't think it's good at all. But I see why most people would run it. But you know, I. I guess if you're planning on switching into Blissey and want to turn that tox potential Toxic into an advantage, then sure. But I do like Swarm. But yeah, and uh, Jolly Jolly sucks. You, you gotta run Adamant on CB Hera. So yeah, there's that. Uh, Jolteon. Thunderbolt, Hidden Power. It's like Zapdos. You can run anything in those last two slots. Except now, 
It is more likely to run Roar to abuse spikes on its checks, BP to pass out of Dugtrio that would try to trap it if it's at full health, and uh, then you know Thunder Wave to prevent setup, because Jolteon's blazing speed means that it's faster than DD Tar, so it, uh, whereas against Zapdos, then T-Tar would be able to grab a Dragon Dance and then KO Zapdos. It wouldn't be able to get a second, but it would be able to KO Zapdos. Now, if it wants to DD on Jolteon, then it's going to get T-Wave no matter what, because first T-Wave breaks the Lum, second T-Wave connects. So, uh, it's really nice. It's also good for Calm on Jirachi and bulky DD Salamence that would live in HP Ice, especially if you have chosen HP Grass over HP Ice. So, uh, that's also team dependent. And uh, Roar and Baton Pass and Thunder Wave, generally two of those three are what you are going to see on Jolteon. Uh, you can also see Wish. I think Wish is really good on Jolt, but it's less common. So uh, you can also potentially see Sub Pass, but that's a lot. That's more of a ladder thing. It's not really a tournament thing because it's not as good. You, you want Jolteon to act as a sort of pseudo special wall. It absorbs. Uh, Thunderbolts, and it you know can take a hit like an Ice Beam or an Ice Punch, so you don't want it subbing and weakening its ability to do that for a sub pass that isn't really necessary. Just dry passing will generally get the job done. So, Roar, BP, and or uh, Thunder Wave, and then the last can be uh, Wish if you are into that kind of thing. So then, you also have a dedicated BP set. It's just like the Zapdos, you can run, except it's less likely to run agility. Matter of fact, I would say it just about never would. So you're just going to run HP Grass so you don't get phased by Roar Swampert. And you can run Lychee or Pattaya, usually going to be Lychee. You can run this alongside Zapdos uh, for a double subpass Lychee attack. And it's really, re it's very specific, but also very dangerous. But yeah, it's pretty much the same as Zapdos other than that, except it's the faster version that switches into other Zapdos because of Volt Absorb. Uh, bear in mind that Volt Absorb does not block Thunder Wave in Gen 3. They changed that starting Gen 4. Alright, Fortress. Uh, simple. You spike and you rapid spin, and I think Fortress... Explosion turns Fortress into a good Pokemon because you... It kind of has move slot syndrome because you want HP Bug to actually handle spinning Claydol and Starmie. And, but you also want Earthquake to KO Magneton, because being able to live HP Fire almost all the time and actually threaten to KO it back is one of the few things Fortress has over Skarm, as well as Spin. So, I think EQ Explosion and just dealing with Claydol with something like a Pursuit Tar is the way to go. And uh, you want Pursuit Tar anyway, because you don't want to be helpless against Gengar. I have my reservations with Fori, but it, what it does, it does well. You have to be very careful of fire moves, like Fire Blast from T-Tar and Salamence. And, uh, but, you know, and uh, even on Blissey, you don't want to lose because you risk the game on Blissey not having Flamethrower when you could have scouted for it. Uh, and Counter is also a decent option, because you counter HP Fire. You counter even special hidden powers in this gen. And it's also nice for, like, countering back Choice Bandit attacks... So you can do that, you know, then you're kind of worthless against non-HP Fire Mag if it comes to that, but... And I like Earthquake for actually threatening to damage things like T-Tar, Metagross, and Jirachi on the Switch. But yeah, Fortress has some options. I mean, it also has other stuff like uh, Zap Cannon, but it's hard enough to fit stuff on it as is with HP Ghost and HP Bug and whatnot. So, but yeah, Fortress is fairly simple. Special Max HP and Special Defense, that's all you ever need to run. Uh, maybe four attack EVs to help out his Earthquake calcs a little, because I don't think the defense really makes a difference. So, there's that. Uh, counter, I guess, also helps it against Arrow, one-on-one. -on -one. So, here's Cloyster. This is the only spread you should be running. The old standard that Linear had was this, which was uh, which also survived Starmie Thunderbolt, but I changed it to this, because this also survived Starmie Thunderbolt and gets an extra point of speed. So, this one is better. Uh because the entire point of this cloister is to be as fast as possible while still surviving Starmie Thunderbolt, because Starmie is death to offense, and Cloister is pretty much used exclusively on offense. So uh, you might not get spikes, but you will remove Starmie, and that will your other Pokemon will thank you for it. So you can run Rapid Spin on it. I think it's actually very underrated, because a lot of Skarmory don't run Toxic, like the offense of Skarmory. Cloister just dominates them. But HP Grass is nice because a lot of Swampert, which is one of Cloister's primary targets for switching in, then they will try to Focus Punch you as you spike, and you can just HP Grass them as they go for that Focus Punch, and 
uh, get, you're not going to KO them because you're not very strong, even though they're rash, but you're still going to be taking a huge chunk out of them, and then you can spike and you know, maybe explode on something later. So Cloyster is like a very, very fast, aggressive fortress. And uh, this is what it runs. It's very simple. You, I don't think Ice Beam is very good. I really have never bought into the hype there. I've tried it a lot. It just doesn't do enough. It's not KOing Celebi and Zapdos. You, you gotta explode on them. I think that's the only way to do it. So, uh, there is that, and I will be back in one second. Alright, so, I uh, had to make lunch plans. Alright, Flygon, a great Pokemon. So, here is its standard attacking set. Uh, Flygon takes advantage of the fact that most Zapdos don't run Toxic or HP Ice, because it's hard to fit into their moveset. You know, HP Grass and stuff like T-Wave, BP, and Roar, just, you know, they're great, but then Flygon makes them rue the day, especially when paired with Magneton for Skarmory. Stab Earthquake is a really nice way to wear down waters. It's got coverage in Rock Slide and HP Bug for, you know, Flyers and Celebi and Claydol. And then Sub is really nice, so you scout switches, so it's not a prediction game. You also want Pursuit Tar with Flygon if you can help it, because it hates Gengar. But yeah, uh, in the old days you would have run Fire Blast, but I think that was before Skarmory ran, you know, careful max special defense. So I would just run Sub and pair it with Magneton and Pursuit Tar. It's really good alongside those guys. Uh, CB is like that. But, you know, a little more prediction reliant, but the reward is humongous. You know, there's Blissey and Swampert, they do not want to shrug off a CB Earthquake. The thing about Offensive Swampert is that it's great, and Magneton backs, er, sorry, Metagross backs it up really nicely against physical attacks, but it does not want to take Flygon's Earthquake at all. Uh, neither of them do. So, and of course, when their Earthquake Sponge is Zapdos, most of the time, then that's not a great switch in either. So it's prediction reliant, but the rewards are huge, so it's... Same support that you want with Offensive Flygon, except more likely that you're going to fit Spikes on the team, because that really makes Flygon devastating. But, uh, just, you give it a choice band. And you might think Gust, well, you want HP Bug for Celebi, especially because Flygon has the amazing speed tier of 328, which lets it check Offensive Calm Minders, and you HP Bug Offensive Calm Mind Celebi really nicely, and then you still want to check Heracross, you can't run HP Flying, so you run Gust. <laughs> you know, it doesn't really have better moves at all. You know, Quick Attack, it's, it's worthless. Um... Yeah, nothing else is worth using. I mean, Toxic isn't really great because Swampert refreshes all the time now, so... Uh, but yeah, CB Earthquake is devastating. Offensive is really nice with Mag and uh, T-Tar. Pursuit Tar, so... Flygon, great Pokemon. Uh, also for... Also a great Pokemon is Defensive Flygon, one of my favorite creations. Because it is like Swampert in that it... Uh, checks DD Tar, checks Arrow, checks Ments fairly well. You know, you gotta be careful around Bandit sets, but it's, it's a good check to these Pokemon. It's bulky, and it doesn't get hit by Spikes. You cannot wear Flygon down with Spikes. That makes it incredibly resilient alongside Protect. And other than that, it's just basically your Garden Variety Swampert slash, you know, Don Fan to take another physically bulky ground type. Th except it hovers above Spikes, so it is hard to wear down for DD Tar Arrow stuff, and that's really nice. And it's still a perfectly good check to DD Mints. So, this set is generally fine. You want Magneton with it, but, uh, and, you know, Pursuit Tar, the same stuff. That's just, just, that's just generally Flygon as a whole. But, uh, yeah, I think that's, yeah, Flygon's really good. And this is a, you know, these are not supposed to be your defensive walls. They're, like, they can help check stuff like T-Tar and Zapdos, but it, they, uh, require, uh, something like Swampert to be paired with it for the actual physical walling part, whereas this, you save a slot because you, this is your physical wall, so. For a while then, this thing paired with uh, Wish Protect Jirachi was really, really popular and just incredibly hard to break. So yeah, uh, Defensive Flygon is awesome, just like these Flygons are. I gotta stress just how nasty uh, this Flygon set is, or help this Fly, both these Flygon sets are against common offense because, you know, Zapdos, which it completely walls, T-Tar, you gotta be careful of Ice Beam, which it runs pretty much exclusively for Flygon. Uh, it hits Claydol harder, too, and it's a good mid-ground for Zapdos-Breloom combos, but uh, still. 
uh, you gotta be careful of that, but you smack these frail T-Tars, you wall and smack Zapdos, the Swamperts are frail, another reason for defense EVs on offensive Swampert. You smack the offensive uh, Swamperts and the Metagross, the backup, that doesn't want anything to do with you. Snorlax obviously doesn't want to be taking your big stab Earthquakes. And, you know, the last can vary. I mean, Mence is a decent check to it, but you also wear it down with Rock Slide in Sand, and it's just... Stupid Mike. Alright, um, just, I'm gonna retread my steps once again. Uh, so yeah, f these two f sets are really good against the standard offensive teams because Zapdos is not running Toxic or HP Ice because it really doesn't want to, can't really afford, I mean it can, but it doesn't really want to, so you could say it can't or won't afford it right now. So, you threaten that, you threaten T-Tar, you threaten Metagross, uh, Snorlax doesn't want to take your Stab Earthquake, and Swampert is getting throttled by it. Another reason for defense EVs on Swampert. And the last, you know, if it's Mens, fine, but, you know, still chipping that with CB Rocks, with uh, Rock Slide. And the, the whole thing is that you become a lot harder to... This Flygon has so many opportunities because of leftovers, and you switch in fairly nicely against uh, Zapdos, and as long as you're careful around T-Tar, then T-Tar as well. Or even like a Metagross Earthquake. Uh, and you dish out damage, you pick your spots nicely. With CB, then you have a little more risk because you don't want an Earthquake and a Zapdos or Salamence, but the upside is huge because your Earthquake absolutely shatters Swampert. It Oko's Metagross, Oko's T-Tar. It, uh, it's Rock Slide, you know, powers through Zapdos and Mence, you know, two of KOing both because they're both very offensive. Uh, well, with Zapdos, you're always going to two of KO even if it's bulky, but with Mence, then you're, uh, really putting a charge in it. I think if you don't outright 2 a KO it, you definitely threaten to 2 a KO it with sand. So it's still not a not some not ideal for the mens user. So you know it's fairly simple to you know get Flygon in on something like a Metagross and just click Rock Slide and because you know Swampert doesn't want to switch directly into the Earthquake. So yeah, uh, yeah, defensive Flygon is uh, good because it throws out Toxic. That's hard to switch into because Toxic Earthquake is a great combo. And of course you got the Magneton for the Skarm. And the Pursuit Tar for the Gengar. And finally, Salic Flygon, which I believe is an h clat creation? Or no, 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 sorry. I think Passy G came up with it on Ladder, and then h clat started using it. And, um... And then, uh... Made it more popular, but I, I know that Passy was using it really early. But yeah, it's, a uh, It doesn't really bluff Choice Band, because, you know, as soon as you do the calc, you're gonna see it doesn't have Choice Band power. But the Salic is what, you know, lets it chip or blast through faster off its Pokemon like Starmie and Aerodactyl late game, especially with Endor. So, uh, yeah, it's, I think you really want Adamant on this set because you are, um, you are boosting your speed and you want all the power you can get. So yeah, Flygon, the Salic Flygon is, uh, underrated. Give it a try. Uh, I don't think these... I don't think it necessarily needs... I guess none of these really need uh, Magneton, per se. Like, uh, this Flygon can be used on defensive teams that... Uh, what's it called? On defensive teams that hover above spikes, as opposed to, you know, beating uh, Skarmory down. As long as you handle Gengar, you know, maybe you throw on HP Ghost to help your Pursuit Tower out a little bit, because HP... Because Rock Slide is not really that important. But, um... Yeah, you know, maybe you do that, but also you, uh, you, if you're with these guys, then you need a plan for Skarmory. You know, maybe you run Fire Blast over, over a uh, sub, you know, not to beat it one-on-one, -on -one, but just to help chip it so it doesn't grab momentum off you. I wouldn't do it on CB Flygon, but yeah, with this set, then, you know, as long as you have, like, a Metagross that's gonna dent Skarm really hard, and then you can finish it off with Flygon, then yeah, you know, it, it's one less restriction. You know, Magneton gets alongside Flygon is great but it can be restricting, so. Anyway, 
Moving on, Flygon's great. Here's Breloom, standard. Uh, you can run Jolly on it. Uh, you Spore, and then you Focus Punch, and then you use it for Death Fodder later. And you try to Sky up You threaten to Sky Uppercut against Blissey and uh, Titar and Snorlax. And, you know, then you can Focus Punch and do big damage to Zapdos and Salamence. And then you can, uh, if Dugtrio tries to Revenge Kill you, you Mach Punch it and then Pursuit Trap it with Titar and goodbye Dugtrio, because Dugtrio has to lock into Aerial Ace to kill Breloom, so it's a wonderful combo. You can use uh, Stun Spore over Sky Uppercut or Mach Punch, because that cripples Zapdos and Salamence and Gengar really hard. Another reason for Pursuit Tar, you want to get uh, Gengar. Uh, if you have Stun Spore, then I think you could probably get away with using uh, Pursuit Metagross here, because... You know, then you're really ruining the Gar. So yeah, you can run Stun Spore somewhere here, but you're mostly using it for the Spore, the threat against Blissey, Titar, Snorlax. Uh, easily facilitated by Baton Pass Zapdos, I might add. You like Jolly, so you can Sky Uppercut a fast Lum Titar. Remember the Max Speed uh, Mixed Tar, the UD Tar? Yeah, well that is that is faster than Adamant Breloom and has Lum for Spore. It will not die to a Mach Punch and will blow it away with uh, Ice Beam. So. Yeah, when you have Jolly, then you turn the tables on it because you just put it away with the Sky Uppercut. So, uh, yeah, there's that. And I think Jolly Breloom, as much as it pains me, is probably better overall. Because it's more about the utility of Spore than the sheer power of Focus Punch. If your opponent can't really handle Focus Punch, then, you know, Adamant is not going to really put it over the edge. Maybe it's nicer with... but, you know, it's... Uh, I think Jolly is just better overall. And uh, a nice alternative is Swords Dance, which... You know, you go for the sweep late game. I think this does want Adamant because you're boosting your attack. You know, Mach Punch is nice for picking off weakened things, and Sky Uppercut is your reliable stab. You, of course, need to pursue the hell out of Gengar, but, you know, that's already a given. So, uh, yeah, that's Breloom for you, used on offensive teams. Uh, so, yeah, these Flygons are used on, you know, Magneton, Pursuit Tar stuff, and can have spikes, doesn't have to, but generally uh, these guys are more offensive, and the defensive set is on more defensive teams. So, uh, where are we? Oh, right, we're at Breloom. Yeah, we said uh, Forge just can be used on, like, balance and offense alike. And, you know, I guess stallish stuff with Blissey too, but Cloyster is pretty much an offensive machine. Jolteon is also an off is a spikes team machine. You know, whether you call it pure offense or just, you know, more bulky offense spikes, you know, whatever. It's still going to be a fast-paced spikes team with Jolteon. So, uh, Gera. Offense, uh, it's pretty much offense all the time. I mean, sometimes your teams with it can be bulkier offense, but there's still going to be offense. You're still going to be dra uh, dragon dancing with it. So the variations are simple. The most standard Gera, I've kind of grown off Taunt. I think it's less standard as well. It's You're better off just uh, magnetoning Skarm because not only will Skarm run Drill Peck now to just totally beat even Taunt variants, even the no attack Skarm variants with Toxic Protect, they can struggle and beat Gyarados and Sand. It's actually kind of funny. So yeah, I don't think it's worth it. And I mean, yeah, you uh, beat the Toxic Waters, Swampert and Milotic, but at the same time, you lose huge coverage on uh, Zapdos, and I think that just really sucks. Because Zapdos is nice, you can remove it with... If you're planning on removing Zapdos with something like that T-Punch, HP, Grass, Metagross, then yeah, I guess you can run Taunt and... But it's going to be tough to fit all that and a mag just to go all in on a on a Gyarados sweep. So I think Double Edge just makes it... Because Double Edge is also its strongest move overall against neutral targets, so that can help put things away, like a Suicune that would otherwise finish you off with Ice Beam. Plus Sand, so you know, stuff like that. But yeah, this is just a fine sweeper. The speed EVs allow it to outrun Dugtrio after a Dragon Dance. Max attack as you need it. So yeah, and uh, Gyarados' purpose is, of course, being a Dragon Dancer that does not die to water or ice moves. Or ground moves. So, unlike uh, its compatriots Salamence and Tyranitar. So, Jolly uh, Gyarados, it... Is, with Adamant, it is outsped by Jolteon and Arrow, but now it is outspeeding them. Of course, it comes at the cost of attack, but, you know, fair price, because now teams that are relying on outspeeding Gera are going to be in for a nasty surprise, especially because Arrow walls this Gyarados, because there's no other option for it. You can't run HP, you can't run Stab, HP Flying, and you can't, uh, and HP Rock on the same set, so you gotta pick one or the other. 
And but you outspeed Jolteon, you earthquake it into dust, and you outspeed Arrow and put it away with the rock uh, HP rock. And best of all, you have HP rock to really smack Zapdos uh, with 20 base power more than you would with Double Edge, uh, with no recoil to boot. So uh, yeah, th that's this is what Jolly Gyarados does. And uh, the speed EVs are to out... You could feasibly drop them to 264, and matter of fact, that's probably better. But uh, I figured since it's supposed to be a Heracross check with its flying typing and Intimidate, even though it doesn't have HP flying, then outspeeding it is not a bad idea. So it's really up to you. If you have a Salamence as well, I would say drop it to 264, make the most out of Gyarados' bulk. But if it's just Gyra, then I would go a little higher. So... Uh, there's that. Uh, HP Rock also puts away Moltres in one hit, which is nice. And now you could run Taunt for the waters. Uh, you definitely have to run uh, Magneton with this uh, as well. Be and uh, I think you really need Double Edge because I don't think Quake Slide coverage is good enough to cut it on Gera when neither of those moves is Stab. So I really think you need that big power of Double Edge. Because uh, Quake Slide on something like T-Tar generally can get the job done because Rock Slide is stabbed and it's powerful, but even that has trouble with uh, not just Flygon and Claydol, but even Breloom and, you know, even Celebi. So I'm not saying Double Edge fixes its issues against Celebi, but you go from a 70 base power move against Celebi to a 120 base power move against Celebi. So significant improvement. Uh, you're not, you're actually beating it. And you will... Um, yeah, you're actually able to hit decently hard. And I, so I think double edge coverage is way too crucial and I would not uh I would not fuss too much about the toxic waters. I would just try to remove them with uh, your T-Tar or your Metagross or your Salamence somehow. And then play to Gyarados' strengths rather than trying to have it do everything and then fail at everything. Yeah, I can't be getting walled by Claydol, Flygon, Breloom, and Celebi, so yeah. Finally, Rest Gera, the UD special. What this set does is, you know, those games where you think, oh, well, he's got a Milotic and a Blissey and a Swampert and uh, you know, Claydol, and I'm just gonna... You would not have Milotic, Swampert, and Claydol, but, you know. My, water, usually Milotic, Swampert, Cla uh, Milotic, Claydol, Blissey. Sorry, I'm tripping over my words. It's 2.41 hours right now. Actually, it's 1.22 p.m., but we've been going at it for 2 hours, 40 minutes. But yeah, in those scenarios, you think, oh, I'm going to taunt, I'm going to DD, and I'm, beat, I'm going to beat all of them. And then you realize your HP flying doesn't do enough as Blissey chips you down with Seismic Toss and Sand, and you just run out of steam and lose. With rest, you just stall them out. And it's as simple as that. If you want more information on this set, I recommend watching the video I did with uh, about UD's team with the rest Gera. And it explains it. So this is an updated EV spread I concocted myself. The special defense and HP investment means that you will never die to Starmie's Thunderbolt plus Sand, which is really big. The speed is lower, but it allows you to outrun base 100s after a Dragon Dance. And the HP, or the defense, I believe, allows you to live plus one Ments and uh, Max Attack T-Tar Rock Slide with Sand 93.8% uh, of the time. So... Uh, 15 out of 16 damage rolls possible you will be living in that scenario. So I think that's good enough. Because uh, you have to choose between living that plus sand and Starmie plus sand. And I think the Starmie plus sand thing is a no-brainer because that's crucial. Whereas, you know, the Gera thing is, um, you know, against those guys that's not nearly as important. That can be maneuvered around more easily. So yeah, this is Rest Gera. If you want a more in-depth look at what it does, then that video is available. And this is the spread I think is good on it. I, I would, uh, I mean, you can go a little less defense if you like, and a little more attack so you threaten Starmie more, but I think it's better to just chip Starmie, and, because you're going to need a DD twice to outspeed it, and you can run more speed or whatever, but this is the general idea of Rest Gera, and that's, I like this one. So, yeah, moving on from Gera to P2. P2 is simple. You trap Dugtrio with it. It's also good as an answer to Salamence. One of the best, actually, as long as you don't walk into a banded Brick Break or a Brick Break with Spikes up from a mixed set. And it's a great counter to Gyarados as long as you have Thunderbolt. And it's got a lot of uh, move options. Uh, Ice Beam, I think, is essential for actually beating Dugtrio. I mean, some people like to recover spam against Dugtrio, and I think that's fine. Uh, just to PP stall it out, because remember, Recover is 32 PP, and if Dugtrio has killed something with EQ, it's only at 15, so you can handle that. 
And uh, so the other moves besides Ice Beam are Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, Toxic, and HP Fighting. Because Porygon actually has a pretty decent attack stat if you go like this and give it a physical move. So you can actually handle T-Tar one-on-one, which is pretty funny. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, running with Magneton often, uh, you don't have to... If you run this kind of set, I think it's good alongside Magneton. P2 just generally fits good, well on uh, Magneton, Celebi kind of stuff. Magneton, Celebi, Metagross, Markop used to use that style a lot. But yeah, Thunderbolt, T-Wave, or Toxic. Yeah, with Toxic, you own Blissey one-on-one because you Trace Natural Cure. Trace has so many cool applications, but do remember that in Gen 3, Trace does not bounce back Intimidate like it does in Gen 4 and later. Did this just... Yes, continue watching. Uh, so you will be taking Swampert and Gyarados' attacks, you know, as they were, not lowered attack, unfortunately. They changed that in Gen 4 as well. But yeah, there's uh, it's still a good Pokemon overall. It's hard to fit. On Call Mind Spam teams, then it's good to remove Dugtrio for your own Jirachi, Celebi. And uh, it works well again alongside Heracross, T-Tar, Metagross, so... Uh, good Pokemon, this is what it runs. You can give it some special defense if you want to, you know, handle Starmie Hydros or Zapdos T-Bolts a little better. T-Wave is nice for, because, uh, actually I would say T-Wave is really crucial because you cripple Metagross really hard and Jirachi and DD Tar, whereas Toxic is not as widely applicable. But yeah, uh, generally this is what P2 does, so. This is the safe set. You can also run, a. Uh, Ice Beam Toxic Thunder Wave, which is really nice. You're not no longer a perfect Gyarados counter, but I think you're generally better off overall. You can Toxic things like Waters and yeah. Toxic T-Wave is just... Uh, makes it uh, have a lot of utility, but you generally do need Ice Beam, I believe. Okay, Charizard. Here's the standard set. I'm sure you've seen in my videos a lot by now. Uh, it's, you know, Fire Blast, HP Grass. We know that combo to be good. And uh, Dragon Claw, so it's not walled by Mets and Flygon, mostly Mets, and Focus Punch because the Charizard is a fire type that does not necessarily fear Blissey and Tyranitar coming in to absorb its attacks, and that is a lot of its appeal. So you can run other stuff, you know, you can run Sub over Dragon Claw for prediction being eased. You can run Overheat, I love Overheat. Uh, so and there's a lot of options for it, but generally, this is the standard set for Charizard. You know what it does. It uh, survives a Gengar Thunderbolt and Blaze Fire Blasts it to Oblivion. It switches into Metagross, scares it out just like Moltres does. It's got a great 100 speed tier so it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Celebi, Jirachi, Zapdos, Salamence, Flygon. Uh, in a pinch, of course. And, you know, you slice through Skarmory, not afraid of Swampert. And you can threaten Blissey. So, that's what Charizard does. This is the standard spread. I like plus special attack, but I recognize that on a lot of offensive teams that scrap that really scrap for every piece of speed they can get, then you might want plus speed. However, I do think the power boost is very significant, especially when you're HP grassing a Swampert. Uh, spikes help a lot if you can fit them, but on no spikes offensive teams, then yeah. So uh, here's the alternative Charizard set. I think Modest is just. Yeah, you need the speed tier, yada yada, but if you're going for sub Pattaya Blaze, you need all the power you can get if you want Blast Burn to actually cut through Blissey and friends. So, Vapakuno had a great idea on this set where you uh, pair, uh, where you use Focus Punch alongside it over Blast Burn, so then you can finish off the Blissey with your Pattaya Blaze Fire Blast, because Blissey can't take Focus Punch and that. But you can also run a. Uh, Overheat, if you don't want to give the charge turn with Blast Burn, it's almost as strong. You can run HP Grass just for coverage. Yeah, Pattaya's art is very cool. And it's hard to fit, but you know, it's nice to clear the weather sometimes, and nice to break open special walls for your special attacking teammates, like Suicune. So, there's that. Venusaur, standard spread is fast. Uh, and that's because it gives it... It's actually surprisingly fast. You get the edge on Heracross and Suicune, and you know... Stuff like the 270 Zapdoses and Menses and Celebes and Jirachis and Moltreses. So, uh, there's a lot of application to that. And you get to threaten more stuff with Sleep Powder, which is really nice. And that's what uh, the point of Venusaur is, to shut things down with Sleep Powder. And of course you have Leech Seed, and since you're running fast, then you can may as well just run a lot of special attack investments. So Skarm, trying to absorb your HP fire, actually gets chunked really hard. And uh, your Giga Drains against T-Tar heal a lot, so it can't just stay in either. So yeah, this makes Venusaur what it is. It's uh, 
So I was going to say Charizard fits mostly on special offense or mixed offense teams with this set. And uh, mixed offense and spikes teams. With this set, it's just for special offense, pretty much. Uh, and Porygon 2 fits on you know, offensive teams that need Dark Trio help. Whereas this Venusaur, it can fit on kind of like bulky offense stuff, but it's really good with spikes. Switching around Leech Seed with spikes up is just nightmarish. So, and especially with Sleep Powder in the mix. So this set also makes a great lead. It matches up well against most leads that aren't Salamence. So, uh, yeah, I would consider that for your team if you're trying to use something offbeat that will give you a leg up against a lot of common stuff. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much Venusaur for you. Pair it with spikes it's, and sand, it's devastating. It's also nice because it is com a complete stop to surf toxic water types. So Milotic, Swampert, they, like Celebi obviously stops them, but it still eats the toxic, which can be annoying, even though it natural cures it off. Whereas Venusaur, completely blocked. So, uh, does wonders for its resilience. Obviously it doesn't have natural cure or recover, but it's still, it's still a very good Pokemon overall. So then there is uh, the classic bulky Venusaur, you know, you can give it some more speed, or... Uh, I put Sludge Bomb here because this is specifically for Scar Mag teams, uh, where you don't want HP Fire, and Sludge Bomb actually helps a lot against Zapdos. What you can also do is Roar. Roar is really, really nasty because it, uh, you know, if, let's say, with, alongside Sleep Powder, let's say you Sleep Powder a Natural Cure Pokemon, and then they switch out and then you roar and bring that natural cured Pokemon back up in with Sleep Powder, then you just keep shutting it down and pretty much KO it for free against something like Blissey or Celebi. It's really, really brutal. Sludge Bomb, of course, is nice for Salamence and Zapdos because Poison Rate and uh, hits uh, with Stab and hits Celebi harder as well and just generally spreads more damage. If you can afford Sludge Bomb, then it is nice to have. Like, even on this set, if you have a Magneton, you could just take out HP Fire and... You know, Leech Seed, the uh, Jirachi, and Metagross, um, you know, Magneton helps out against those, but having Sludge Bomb is just a wonderful tool because it means more passive damage, which is the name of the game. And you're not really going to be clashing with Sleep Powder either. Uh, because, in fact, you're going to be gladder that you're stacking le a Poison on top of Leech Seed. So, and of course you harass Blissey a lot more. Uh, so, yeah, this is a really good set. You can run Roar over Giga Drain. If you like, you can run HP Grass or, you know, like Razor Leaf or Magical Leaf or Alternative Stab if you want more uh, PP on your move, on your Grass Stab, but Giga Drain generally gets the job done as long as you're not Cavalier about wasting it. And uh, Sludge Bomb is really nice if you can afford it. Roar is also good. Very good against sub-passing electrics, so. Uh, but yeah, this, these are the two Venusaur sets. And they are, you know, this, the EVs and moves are kind of interchangeable depending on what you prefer. Moving on, Hariyama. Here's a standard Hariyama. It's one of the few Pokemon to get knockoff. The best one by far. It counters the hell out of Tyranitar. Even has thick fat to resist Fire Blast and Ice Beam. Doesn't mind Rock Slide. Has the physical bulk to tank Earthquakes. Don't use it to switch into a million CB Focus Punches. That won't end well. But it's a, you know, you're going to have a second check alongside it. So it's fine. And you uh, spread knockoff. And you check Blissey. And you knock off things like Skarm and Zapdos. And make, a, make it a real pain in longer games. You whirlwind around with spikes up and you know, force sand damage and yeah, Hariyama is just a great Pokemon. Pairs extremely well with Blish Blissey. If you can fit a cleric in there like uh, Aromatherapy or Heal Bell Blissey, Heal Bell is illegal with Wish whereas Aromatherapy is not legal with Wish so I guess in that case then Heal Bell is better than Aromatherapy after all because it reveals, it doesn't reveal that you don't have Wish. So yeah, but you know, generally resting is fine. Wishing to it uh, does a lot as well. Like Titar comes in on Titar or Snorlax comes in on Blissey as you wish, and you just go to Hariyama. Yeah, so it's a great, great Pokemon. You know, knocking off things like Suicune and Sand just is devastating. So awesome, awesome Pokemon for uh, bulky teams. This is where this thing fits, and uh, yeah, and offense of Hariyama is like a newer thing. You know, you could say it's technically outclassed by Machamp, who's faster and stronger, but, you know, Hariyama has the surprise factor, which makes it really nice. Got a big, it's still really strong, Cross Chop, Focus Punch, HP Ghost Rock Slide for Heracross-esque coverage, uh, except you run uh, two fighting moves and HP Ghost and Rock Slide instead of a bug move, but still. You could probably run HP Bug if you wanted to surprise Celebi, because you're, thanks to Guts, then Heracross, or sorry, then Gengar can't really, uh, you know, if it burns you, it just makes you stronger. So, 
I would say that HP bug is probably better, especially with how Gengar has been uh, l more limited in effectiveness lately with how people go out of their way to prepare for it. So this might be uh, helpful. You can also run knockoff over one of these moves. That would also be good because if uh, Hariyama is already annoying enough with knockoff on the defensive set, but if you're running an offensive set and you knock off the Pokemon that's supposed to wall you, then you become really difficult to deal with. So it's uh, fun to experiment with. And the knockoff might actually be what makes it better than Machamp because Machamp cannot knock off in Gen 3. So I would say probably toy with knockoff on one of these sets. You know, knocking off uh, Hari or Zapdos or Salamence is probably a lot safer than than uh, rock sliding them. So to be considered, because when you once you knock them off, you don't have to predict anymore. You can just cross chop or focus punch, uh, and still hit them hard with sand up. So that's offensive Yama for you. And moving on, still got a good chunk of Pokemon to get through, but I'll try to be fast. So here's the awesome Vaporeon set. It can be modest. I think it's really good, but Timid is the standard, and I accept that. So the cool thing about Vaporeon is that it hits really hard with Hydro and Ice Beam. Way harder than Starmie or Offensive Swampert or even Offensive Milotic. You know, with Timid, it's a str almost as strong as Modest Starmie and Milotic. That reminds me, Starmie can be modest, but usually shouldn't be because you no longer outspeed um, uh, Endeavor Swampert and uh, Gengar. So, it's kind of a waste. But the power can be nice. Anyway, so, yeah, look at that 350 special attack stat. But no matter what nature you choose, the selling point of Vaporeon is the only Pokemon that can safely take the combination of Hydro and Ice Beam are slow walls that can't really hurt Vaporeon too much. They rely on, like, toxic and seismic tossing it down. So, Blissey and Milotic. So, what you do is you sub as those Pokemon come in, and then you just pass to your teammates. You know, easy. Done. So... Um, what was the next thing? Oh, yeah, sometimes you want to run Roar, because this prevents Roar Suicune from completely walling you. And so you just Roar it out first, and then you continue your pass uninterrupted. So, uh, you're outspeeding Cloyster with the spread, which is nice. You get the 101 HP sub, so your sub survives a Seismic Toss, and you get your, you know, big hitter, your Heracross. This thing pairs really well with uh, sub Sal Heracross. You get that in for free, your DD Tar in for free, your Metagross, whatever. So, uh, yeah, oh, with Breloom, it's just disgusting. So, uh, yeah, like, uh, without Roar, you no longer threaten Celebi, so Celebi can be annoying. But if it's a slow, bulky Celebi set, you can still sub and then pass to something that bulky Celebi can't break the sub with. Like, Metagross, uh, you know, you block Leech Seed, and uh, Metagross is not losing its sub to a Psychic or an HP Grass. Uh, so, uh, you still get that in for free. So, uh, trade-offs. But yeah, I really do like the power on Modest, but I recognize the uses of Timid, outspeeding Cloyster, T-Tar, lots of uh, bulky Zapdos, lots of bulky Celebi, uh, Endeavor Swampert, so. Uh, but yeah, I do love Max Special Attack, because that Hydro Pump is just disgusting. Another alternative is Salic Berry. This makes it a really good lead, because you just stay in on Zapdos, you Ice Beam it, and, uh, or you Hydro Pump it, I guess, but generally with Ice Beam, and... And in the lead slot, you really threaten Salamence, too, so... Uh, but yeah, you you, uh, you sub down to your Salic Berry, and then you pass it, and, you know, that makes Heracross really dangerous, and, you know, DD Tar and Metagross and whatnot, so... Asta was using this on one of his most, uh, most dangerous teams. And so Salic and Lefties are both good. And uh, it actually works out perfectly, because 249 speed is the benchmark to outrun Dugtrio after Salic, so... Oh yeah, Salak and Lefties are both really good. So if you are running Salak, then I would run Timid no matter what. Uh, with Lefties, it's more negotiable. But yeah, so uh, su Subpass Vaporeon is really, really good. So if you, if you can take its Hydro Ice Beam combination, or hell, even just Hydro, chances are it's going to sub and pass all over your ass. So then there's the standard defensive Vaporeon, which you know, two slots on recovery kind of sucks, but it does have a very nice niche in that uh, wish support, obviously, and it completely blanks Suicune and hazes its boosts away, so, like, yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, Calm Mind Rest Suicune will stall, will PP stall Vaporeon, but with Haze, what you can do is remove its boosts, even at plus six, because Vaporeon eats even plus six serves from Suicune, matter of fact, it gains 25%, no matter, uh, how strong Suicune's serves are, and, uh, you haze its boosts away, then you can switch out while Suicune, you know, has to waste more PP, and you will be able to stall it out with smart switching and smart play. So, 
Yeah, Haze is really nice. I mean, it's not really great against, like, other Calm Minders, because they can just hit you and you'll hit them really hard in return, but against Suicune, it's great. And, uh, you know, it's a, you know, it kind of sucks to not be able to fit Toxic. So I guess, in theory, if you were better equipped against Suicune, then yeah, you could just run Toxic over Haze, and you would have the Surf-Toxic combination. A very strong Surf, by the way, even with no investment. And you would actually be able to threaten things like Zapdos a lot more, or even just being able to Toxic a Celebi on the Switch would be nice. And you would actually be able to check Ments. This just requires you to be better off against Suicune, so. But yeah, not unreasonable. It has its place. Uh, I like Vaporeon a lot. Next up, uh, Weezing. This is the UD set. Weezing has a lot of potential for set variations. It's got two amazing moves in will o and Explosion, just like Gengar, and it's got amazing coverage. So you got the Fire Grass coverage, which mows through Skarm and uh, Refresh Pert and you often attract Blissey, and you blow up on it. Uh, now, this set might need a little bit of updating. You might want Sludge Bomb or Thunder, because a Sludge Bomb will... Uh, either of those moves will prevent Moltres or Charizard from coming in and completely walling you bar explosion. Now, given how weak the offensive teams this Weezing tends to find itself on, uh, tend to be to Moltres, then you will not be sorry to explode it, but it's nice if you are able to hit it without necessarily exploding your Weezing. So, uh, if you run... I think this set is really good, actually. Sludge Bomb HP Fighting, because the Fire Grass set also attracts um, Pursuit T-Tar, and now you just completely destroy it. So... Uh, I guess you could still keep this to outrun Offensive Perp, but now I think if you can't get the tie, because HP Fighting... Yeah, if you can't get the tie, then I would just go with Adamant. Uh, so, if you can't get the tie against Endeavor Perp and outrunning uh, Metagross, then I would just stick with Adamant for this set. You know, if you're running something like Thunder, HP Grass, then you can... Then I would stick with uh, Timid. So, these are the Weezing sets I would recommend, but the general idea is similar. You bait in, you know, like stuff like Refresh Milotic and Blissey, and uh, you are able to uh, explode on them. And, you know, you try to work your way around the Pursuit Tar if they have one. But generally, Weezing is really nice. It's got nice defensive utility, ground immune, fighting resist. Uh, ground immune means it's immune to Earthquake and Spikes and Dark Trio's Arena Trap. Fighting resist is nice. And it's immune to Toxic as well, so it's not easy to wear down. So, yeah, Weezing's great. This is the only Weezing worth using. Don't try to use any defensive stuff. I mean, I'm sure you could try to use, like, a Taunt Pain Split set. Like, this set is probably pretty good, uh, especially with Jolly. I'm sure it has some merit, but you know, uh, for now I would stick with the other before you... The offensive set before you experiment with this. That said, I'm sure this does have potential. So... Uh, next up, Kingdra. This is as simple as it gets. There's one Kingdra variant. You Rain Dance and you sweep with Swift Swim against teams. You know, Starmie is jealous of how easily it just cuts through everything with its power and coverage, and it's faster than everything. So, And uh, T-Tar resetting the sand on it doesn't work because Gen 3 means T-Tar does not have a special defense boost, so it drops to Hydro. Uh, Kingdra's Hydro Pump is really strong. And yeah, the last move can be HP Grass. Uh, I like Surf also because, again, Hydroing a 30% Magneton or Metagross sucks. But like some people like HP Grass for the unboosted, you know, the non-rain boosted hit against Swampert, which is definitely fair. And it's safer against Starmie, so I, you know, could really be on board with either one. Uh, it really depends. And Leftovers can be Lum, but I like uh, Kinger's ability to be threatening even in Sand. You know, against slower teams with stuff like Metagross, T-Tar, and... Um, Metagross, T-Tar, and Swampert, so I don't want Swampert to be able to like protect stall Kingdra down, so I really like lefties there. That said, Lum is nice for T-Wave Zapdos, so again, preference and your team structure. So, moving on, Jinx, uh, this is a lead, both of them are pretty good as leads. It's kind of boomer bust. Jinx is really stupid because if you get a freeze, you can probably win the game on the spot, or you can get walled and um, do nothing by a team with T-Tar, Blissey, Metagross. <laughs> But yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, it has a lot of potential, and it's kind of boomer bust. It's super matchup fishy, but it can uh, can be really really dangerous. And uh, you can also run modest if you're crazy. But 
I guess this is another reason why uh, lead CB Mints on ladder, you might want to consider Jolly. Only on ladder, because there's a lot of jinxes out there. So, uh, the other set, I believe ZF came up with this one. It's really cool, it's more consistent. So, after you put something to sleep, then you thief, and you can steal Blissey's lefties, and then it's getting chipped in sand, and it's really nice, and you can steal a Metagross's lefties, or you know, Jirachi, or Titar, or whatever. So you get a sleep and then a thief off, and that's a really good combination to start off the game. And then you can you know, tweak the last move to your liking. You can run HP Fire for unsuspecting uh, Fortress and chip on Metagross. That would be really nice. Uh, you can run Psychic for Gengar. Uh, I think HP Fire is probably the best combination. But uh, yeah, so that's Jinx for you. Very offensive teams, Jinx is on. Uh, if I didn't mention it earlier, the subpass Vaporeon is on very offensive teams, and the defensive set is on very stallish teams. And for Hariyama, you know, defensive, bulky, balance for standard, and off more offensive for offensive. You know, just want to be as thorough as possible. Regice, the special version of Snorlax. Ideally, it baits in Blissey and blows it up. And it's got good stab, ice beam, and, you know, Thunderbolt backing it up, so it's nice. Special attack set kind of lets it down. And, Thunder Wave is nice, admittedly, but you want Thunder Wave and HP Fire for stupid 4 and it's hard to fit everything, and you will definitely need to back up its explosion with Dugtrio to actually finish Blissey off, but you know, that's generally going to be worthwhile if, you're, if your uh, Special Sweepers backing it up can really finish the job, so like Starmie, Rain Dancers, that kind of thing. Uh, Regis definitely facilitates some def very dangerous Pokemon, switches into Zapdos, and it can be very annoying. Its Ice Beam can be very strong against Zero Bulk Naive T-Tar. And Thunder Wave is obviously very irritating to T-Tar and Metagross and Jirachi. And uh, you don't switch ground types into Regice too well. I mean, Defensive Swampert maybe if you're trying to dance around getting your special wall beaten. And that's kind of one of my problems with Regice. But if you're on your game with Regice, it can do a lot for you. Fits on offensive teams. Don't try to go defensive with it. Blissey is just better. You use Regice for its ability to turn its defense into potentially game-breaking offense. You throw out your strong attacks, you potentially boom something, you spread paralysis, that supports your other guys, and you fit it on offensive teams for that reason. So, moving on. Ludicolo. Uh, Rain Dance Sweeper that also has Grass Stab, so it's harder to wall with opposing waters. Uh, simple as that. <laughs> and Lefty's Lum, same deal. This set is actually very underrated. You use Leaf Seed and three attacks, I'm sure you could use Surf if you wanted. But against, um, you know, against a lot of defensive teams, you can be very irritating with this. That said, I just really included this set for completion. While it has seen some usage, it's still very sparse so far. So I would uh, definitely, you know, try out the standard Ludicolo before you try messing with this variant. But I do think this variant has a lot of potential, and I wanted to include it for posterity. Finally, defensive, because we've been speaking about weather clearing. This set has a lot of potential, because with this bulk... Uh, any Metagross, it's a good wall to most Metagross. I mean, yeah, sure, Choice Band, uh, Double Edge, or something will probably not be too well appreciated, but, you know, the nice thing is that it heals up nicely thanks to Rain Dance and Rain Dish, and then Leech Seed on top of that. You know, you can include Tox or, uh, Protect if you like. I think Toxic is nice to spread more damage, like annoy Blissey more. Uh, but, you know, either, either works. You gotta be careful because, you know, the te defensive teams... Uh, that try to do a lot of damage, or defensive teams without sand sometimes struggle to do damage in extended games, so you really gotta be making use of the weather clearing with this, with your Curse Lax or your Suicune, but uh, something to keep in mind, and again, mostly for posterity, but it is nice to have a niche. Again, standard Ludicolo is just the Rain Dance Sweeper, very, very, very dangerous, and uh, that Earthquake resistance is really nice. Uh, it's a little weaker than Kingdra, but you know, still stronger than Starmie, so... Umbreon, uh, this is the alternative Gengar Pursuiter, the one that's supposed to pursue it all the way dead, not, you know. no, leave me alone, okay, uh, because Metagross pursues it for a little bit of damage, but with Umbreon, then Gengar is completely ruined, because thanks to Synchronize, then if Gengar Will-O-Wisps it, then it will get burned itself, so, you know, then it's ruined, because Gengar is not coming back from that. So, and then, of course, you chip it down with Pursuit, and it's nice if you can fit, like, Heal Bell Celebi or something on your team, uh, which is also nice because Umbreon gives a lot of free turns to Metagross and Snorlax, so Celebi can stand in their way. But yeah, if you can Heal Bell that burn off, that's really nice, and you can Pursuit, and you don't bring Sand, so you have an easier time supporting uh, something like an Earthquake Curse Lax. 
And yeah, other than that, Wish Support is always nice, Toxic is always irritating for offense, so Umbreon is a nice little Pokemon. You can't fit it on every single team, it's very, very Spikes weak, so you need to be very, very strong against Sand, or sorry, uh, against Spikes, and Skarmory in particular, but uh, for teams, like I've seen a couple of Magneton, Donphan, Umbreon teams, Magneton removes the Spiker, then Donphan threatens to spin, and if there is a Gengar, then Umbreon will pursue it very, very safely, because unlike T-Tar, it's not vulnerable at all to Dugtrio. Matter of fact, it kind of pursuit traps Dugtrio. Um... So, yeah, it will, the spin will be pulled off. Obviously, it's not a very great combination against Cloyster, but that's one of Cloyster's strengths, avoiding uh, Magneton stuff. So, Magneton Claydol stuff in particular, or Donphan, the Claydol surrogate in this scenario. So, you've got that, and this is pretty much all it does. It's a special wall. It's not a great special wall like Blissey because it doesn't handle Calm Minesweepers much at all. I mean, Jirachi switches into it, but uh, as long as you have backup there, like Earthquake Curse Lax helps, and weather clearing, like uh, the Sunny Day Moltres is a great example. Osgood has a very good team like that. Then, uh, and he's got the Heal Bell Celebi, everything. It's Umbreon, Heal Bell Celebi, Magneton, Donphan, Sunny Day Moltres, and Curselax. I like it a lot. And uh, so yeah, that's that's what this Umbreon does. And then there's the Mean Pass Umbreon. Uh, McMegan recently posted a variant with Charm, which I think is really smart. It makes the pulling off the trap easier because you are weakening the physical Pokemon coming in. You know, something like a a T-Tar with Focus Punch, you mean look it, and then you uh, you charm it until it's very weak, you taunt to prevent phasing, and uh, you charm, and then it's super weak, and then you go to your, you know, Calm Mind Rest Suicune, and you boost up to plus six, plus six, and hopefully sweep. That's the idea with uh, Mean Look Pass Umbreon. You try to trap something helpless, trap something unsuspecting, and then you pass it to a sweeper, and you get to plus six, plus six, and try to sweep. So, like, uh, Call Mine Rest Suicune is one, uh, DD Tar is another, so. Yeah, that's Umbreon. Marowak, very, very, very niche, but, uh, what it does is, if you pass an agility to it with Zapdos, it can potentially end the game right there, because it's plus two, Thick Club, Earthquake, Oko, Swampert, KO is pretty much everything else. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's really dangerous. Some players have tried to use it on more offensive teams as a sixth Pokemon, as a cleanup option. Because it is ground, it's got decent, you know, defensive stats, not HP, but actual defense, so it can take a hit from most things. It can respond to T-Tar with a cold Oko, so it can check DD-Tar pretty well. And, uh, can, you know, threaten the hell out of things like Snorlax, Metagross. So, you can take a hit from Jirachi, KO it back, same with, uh, Celebi. So, yeah, it, they surround it with things like T-Wave uh, Zapdos and B-Slam Snorlax, so they try to spread Para for it, for it to clean up against uh, something like a Paralyzed Suicune or Skarmory, you know, flinch through it with Rock Slide, GSC style. Uh, or uh, So, if you paralyze a Metagross then, uh, with Snorlax's Body Slam, then Marowak will outspeed it later, and it's just another victim. So, yeah, it's it's got a little niche. Either Agility Pass, which is riskier, or... Like, it's still fairly risky on an offensive team, but Undisputed had some good results with it. He used it in SPL a couple of years ago. SPL 8 against Kevin Garrett, if you're itching to check out the replay. And uh, it worked out pretty nicely. I think the Marowak actually won the game. So that's what Marowak does for you. And uh, yeah, just only on offense, obviously. So, uh, yeah. So these Ludicolos, I forgot to mention what kind of teams they fit on. Just more balanced stuff, whereas... This is just the special offense stuff. Regice is a great partner with Ludicolo and Kingdra. It, it facilitates them with its special wall removing. So, or it's and it's T-Tar crippling and whatnot. So, Machamp. Bulk up murders most uh, Scar and Bliss teams. They can't burn it with Gengar because they just make it stronger. Bulk up makes it harder to revenge kill with Dugtrio because its uh, defense gets boosted and it cuts down power of Gengar's explosion as well. You know, as long as Cross Chop hits, it's devastating. You know, and uh, it hits really hard with Fighting Stab, most down T-Tar and Swampert as well. So, very difficult Pokemon to deal with. A lot of Skarms have been going above 209 speed for its, uh, for, just for Machamp, so they can Drill Peck it down, which kind of cramps its style a little bit, but it's still a very, very dangerous Pokemon because it gets so many opportunities. BP Zapdos into Machamp against Blissey or T-Tar, yikes. Free bulk up, free death. Uh, HP Ghost is nice to smack Gengar, but I think HP Bug is a little bit better because Gengar is fairly helpless against you, and you're going to beat it anyway, whereas HP Bug allows you to beat Celebi, uh, which is really, really nice. So, 
Um, it has that going for it. And then of course is the Choice Band set, which needs a little more prediction, but oh wow, it is really strong. Cross Chop has a higher critical hit rate in this gen. I think it's 25%. So if you crit uh, Salamence, you KO it through Intimidate, and you have a fairly decent chance of having that happen. And uh, Focus Punch, of course, is stronger than even Heracrosses. Has a very good chance to KO Skarmory. Uh, I don't think it's favored, but it's a good chance, like 37 to 43 or something. And uh, then the other moves are fairly obligatory. Yeah, you you know need some Gengar support because you don't want to be predicting the Gengar switch. Uh, further, you want HP Bug too. You want to be Okoing Celebi, not coming up short. So yeah, you want to have some help against Gengar. But you know the spamming Cross Chop. If there's no Gengar in the picture, you spam Cross Chop, and it is devastating. Uh, I think a disaster area had some teams with uh, CB Machamp plus Houndoom because Houndoom removes. Uh, Gengar and also harasses Celebi so that Machamp is free to just spam its fighting moves and not have to predict. So, yeah, that's Machamp. Offensive teams only. <laughs> um, Smeargle. Suicide Spikes lead the end. Now, now, you don't necessarily have to lead with it. You can do stuff like bring in a slow special wall by uh, using Zapdos and then you BP out and then Smeargle has a free spore and then spikes. And, uh, well, that, that's pretty much what it does. It's like a very, 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 very offensive version of Cloyster that can't take a hit. So, lead with it or get it in safely against Blissey or something. Or like a slower Metagross, or like a non lump Metagross, rather, because Smeargle is faster than all Metagross. And then you Spore and you Spikes, and yeah. The remaining moves can be a lot of things. You know, you like Endure so you can Salak and blow up in the face of, you know, everything. Get a little bit of chip, put him in range for something like Arrow. Uh, you can run Thunder Wave to cripple stuff. You can run Will-O-Wisp. You can run, you know, Combination. The only moves you really need to be running are Spore and Spikes. And the rest you can, you know, Destiny Bond, Taunt, Whirlwind, whatever you like. So, uh, yeah, Smeargle is very one-dimensional, but it's pretty good uh, once in a while. I've had a lot of fun using it. Here's Raikou. Fell out of favor with this Calm Mindset, which I mostly included for posterity. It can run Sub Calm Mind or Crunch if you want to hit Celebi and uh, Swampert with the same uh, Pokemon, which is rare for an electric type. You also hit Claydol harder. But I think the set that is in vogue right now is this set, the Subtoxic Lead. And uh, you pretty much use it kind of like a Suicide Lead, but you put a lot of pressure. You know, with when you're trying to sweep with the Calm Mind Raikou and you have to walk on eggshells with it, then it's a lot, a lot less effective, but when you're a lot more aggressive with it because you don't really mind it going down as long as you do damage with it, then Raikou becomes a lot more dangerous because its Thunderbolt is really strong, especially once you go with that plus special attack nature, uh, which you can because you're not looking to sweep. You're looking to dish out as much damage as possible, and you're still really fast naturally, so you can outspeed uh, Starmie, or not Starmie, um, base 100s, so that's really good. And you're hitting T-Tar hard, you're toxicing and spamming sub against Blissey, so that's that's a problem. If Dugtrio switches in as you sub, then you kill it with HP Grass, unlike the Timid set. And you, uh, you just truck as much as possible. You also have a great matchup against Zapdos leads, because Zapdos does not want to deal with that. So you sub up, and you fire off the Thunderbolt, and you see what happens. If a Snorlax comes in, you Thunderbolt it a couple times, you get three Thunderbolts off on it and uh, two, and maybe three, it depends on how much Earthquake does, uh, and how much attack investment the Snorlax has. I think you're generally going to be able to get off three Earth uh, th Thunderbolts on it, and then your special attackers will go crazy. So, uh, paired with the Zapdos, this thing is absolutely devastating. So, Raikou's been brought back to the limelight a little bit. Uh, Houndoom, simple Pokemon. It is... Uh, immune to Will-O-Wisp, you can get a Flash Fire boost, but I think Early Bird is better, so you have better odds against... Well, I, Hypno Gar is really dumb, but I guess Flash Fire is nice because you actually wall Moltres like this, so never mind. Flash Fire is better. And you actually threaten Moltres with Crunch, you have a much higher special attack stat than T-Tar, so Gengar isn't getting away even with uh, special defense. And you have Will-O-Wisp of your own to toy with the opponent. Yeah, how do, you can fit in stuff like HP Grass and Beat Up, but it's hard. I think this is generally the most no-nonsense set. You know, Roar would be nice too, but no dicking around with Houndoom. Uh, you use it to pursue Will-O-Wisp. I mean, in theory, you could ditch Crunch, I suppose, because you can just... But I think Pursuit is just safer. And you can uh, go slower if you want. You want all the special defense you get so Gengar doesn't Thunderbolt you down. Uh, so, you invest in Spadef, not HP. Or, you know, a mix. You can do the calcs yourself. 
And but that's what Houndoom does. It traps Gengar, and it walls. It also really threatens uh, Salaby, and uh, it also walls most offensive Jirachi, you know, the ones without Thunderbolt. So uh, yeah, it's very vulnerable to Dugtrio, but you have a lot of good tools at your disposal. So that's Houndoom for you. So Donphan. Only to be used on teams with Magneton and a Pursuiter. So, like, the Curse Lax team earlier was one example uh, of Osgood's, the one with the Pursuit Umbreon. But most of the time, you're going to be using this on a team with Pursuit Tar and Spikes. So you've got your Sand, your Spikes, your Magneton, and your Spinner, who is facilitated by your Magneton and your Pursuit Tar removing uh, two of the three Spikers, main Spikers, we're not counting Smeargle, and uh, the potential Gengar, respectively. Now, you can run Toxic, and I think it's really good, but HP Rock is really nice because you can... Actually, I think you might want some attack EVs to 2 KO Ments and Sand. Uh, so, you know, you can toy with that. I forget what the calc is. I think, generally, as long as you keep uh, Donphan around... I think this is a spread I use on another team. Something along these lines. But as long as, uh, you know, you do your calcs, then you can be just fine. And of course, if you have Toxic, then you can just focus on uh, defense, on defense EVs. Uh, HP Rock is nice because you, well, you're not blocked by a totally random sub-arrow, I guess. But uh, it's also nice because you don't lose to Taunt Gera. Although if you've got a Skarmory and you're careful about getting it magged by trapping their mag with your mag, then you can just, <laughs> yeah, you can just, uh, HP, you can just uh, handle the Gara with your Skarm, but HP Rock is playing it safe. Also a little bit of chip on Gengar switching, so your Pursuit Tar has an easier time. So, uh, yeah, I do like Toxic though. It is a, it's a tried and true combo. It cripples things like uh, Flygon trying to switch in, or Salamence in general. Because you can Toxic and then you can protect and switch around rather than having to hit it with several HP Rocks. Works as well if Salamence comes into you and intimidates you and is mixed. A common threat for a lot of Don fan teams. So, uh, Toxic is good. Also means your EVing is easier because your IVs are more forgiving and you don't have to invest in attack for HP Rock. So, uh, you can just go something like... Excuse me. Something like this. I mean, you can also go max defense. It's the best physical T-Tar counter in the game. Better than Hitmontop because it heals in sand. Uh, so it's better than having Intimidate. But yeah, you can definitely, you know, toy around with Donphan. I mean, if you needed to take a couple HP grasses from Zapdos, you shouldn't, but, you know, just in case, then you can give it some more bulk, because, you know, it doesn't need all that defense. But it is nice to have sometimes. And it's nice that its Earthquake is so strong, uh, naturally. It's 20 points higher than Swampert, you know. That's 80 EVs more than... That's like if Swampert invested 80 EVs into attack. So... Anyway, yeah, Donphan's great. Only fits on one, you know, maybe two styles of team, but it's fantastic. Steelix, speaking of things that need mag and pursuit tar support, but are really good, this is like a Metagross that is, you know, water weak, but it also switches into Zapdos, so great trade-off. Now, uh, I have the video that I recommended earlier about uh, UD's team with the rest Gyarados. That team also has Steelix, so if you want a more thorough Steelix analysis, then uh, I would refer to that. However, the thing I want to show here is the Steelix spread I have, which, you know, takes a little bit more from Zapdos HP Grass, but more importantly, it had, or I th not more importantly, but I think it outweighs, is that it has more attack EVs. This allows it to always Oko Bulkless Dugtrio, which means that you, uh, like, Steelix can pretend, potentially avoid a 2 a KO from Dug with Protect, but, you know, it's easier if you just KO it in return. Uh, and you only have to take one Earthquake instead of two. So, uh, that's Steelix for you. Refer to the UD video for more. Uh, Metacham. A lot of people have been asking me to do a video about Metacham, and, you know, gladly. I'd love to, I just have to figure out how to use it first. But yeah, the standard Metacham is this. Don't use Choice Band. You know, as soon as they see you don't have lefties, they protect and sand wears you down, and it is ugly. You don't need the power from Choice Band. You already have 480 frigging attack. So, Sub helps you find your mark. As long as you're doing that, you can... You'll be just fine. Just a regular Focus Punch will do the job. If you want to replace Sub with Rock Slide, so you smack uh, Zapdos one-on-one, -on -one, 
and you can hit uh, Mentz on the switch harder, then that's fine. But with sub, then Gengar can't pivot into your fighting move safely anymore. You can Oko the hell out of it. You can uh, smack Celebi nicely. So, yeah, Metacham has all the tools to toy with uh, traditional fighting answers. And, you know, the sheer power is unmatched. So, uh, yeah, it's even stronger than slacking. So, it's I mean, yeah, if you really want to just see things melt to fighting moves, then you can slap on Choice Band. And with the... I guess now, with the amount of Gengar running around being lower than it's ever been before, then now would be the time to run CB Metacham and just mow stuff down. But sub is generally safer, especially because of long... Or not just sub, but uh, lefties in general, because the longevity factor is really, really huge. So, uh, yeah, BP Zapdos into Metacham. The BP Zapdos into Fighter combo is always reliable, always fun. And uh, from there, you can just... Uh, you can just go wild. And it has a pretty good speed tier against a lot of the you know 240 stuff that runs around. You can even give it some little bulk. You know, you can outrun the Zap... You can outrun the... Uh, the Vaporeon. Uh, the Timid Vaporeon and stuff like that. You know, so... It's not going to make much of a difference, but who knows? It could save you and get a final attack off. All right, Cacturn. I really hope this thing gets banned. It's really stupid. Uh, the EV, their the EVs can shift. It's asking the moves. Uh, just a pure subseed Cacturn is really nice because you don't have to focus on spikes and you can run both stabs. Because Needle Arm is really great coverage and it has a nice flinch chance, which makes Sandvale even more devilish. But uh, HP Dark is nice because Claydol, Starmie, for so you can spin or you can threaten uh, spinners. And you also smack the hell out of Gengar. Uh, is Feint Attack not better because it can't miss? It's 60 base power, never mind, so. <laughs> I guess Feint Attack helps against other Sandvale nonsense. But yeah, uh, I think some players like uh, Mono Grass, which is also fine because you also hit Claydol and... Uh, you also hit Claydol and Starmie with that. And you just miss out on Gengar, but that's very fixable with the Pursuit Tar. I think McMegan runs a lot of Spadef or some, some spread like this. Uh, I think they run HP Grass, but I gotta say, I think Needle Arm is just better because of that 30% flinch rate. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't bother. I think Magneton is a great partner, so I wouldn't bother with HP Fire. So yeah, Sandvale, I hope it leaves us. It is nonsense. But yeah, some uh, Spadef investment goes a long way. Helps it survive like a random Swamp or Ice Beam and keep on trucking with ridiculous nonsense. But yeah, if you have a spike somewhere else, I mean, it's pretty hard to fit on Sandvale teams. But if you're willing to go that extra mile, then you can reap the benefits of both stabs. So, yeah, Cacturn is dumb. Speaking of dumb Sandvale nonsense, Gligar, I hope it leaves too. Uh, Gligar is actually pretty cool because it checks... Oh, it's Hypercutter. Why is it Hypercutter? It has to be Sandvale. Hypercutter would, uh... It wouldn't have a niche without Sandvale, but Hypercutter at least would mean it doesn't get intimidated, which I guess is cool enough on a Sword Dance poke. But still, uh, it's a good Heracross check with its typing. Unfortunately, its move pool really sucks because it's a shame because uh, it's immune to Sand and Spikes, which are awesome traits. So I was hoping to try out like a Taunt set on it, but it doesn't get Taunt. That's only Gliscor. So uh, yeah, Gligar is. Dumb. It's just it's a hair cross check and it's a good fighting check and it's got a good stab combination. Unlike Gyarados, it has some stab on both EQ and HP flying, and it's got Swords Dance that boosts its attack. Pretty good speed stat, you know, you can go all the way up to 295. Uh, you can also go Adamant, I I suppose. Especially if you got a lot of T-Wave to go with your Sand Veil, because you just are a real, real connoisseur of Pokemon. But um yeah, I guess that's also feasible, and it does it does appreciate the power boost. But yeah, a Sandvale Gligar should burn in hell. And uh, yeah, this is what it does. It checks Heracross, checks Fighters, Swords dances up, remove Skarm, very hard to wall. You know, Zapdos often doesn't even run HP Ice, gets peppered by HP Flyings, doesn't heal in Sand as Gligar heals in Sand. Ugh, yikes. Anyone who played Pokemon Coliseum might remember the Sandvale antics of uh, Gym Leader Justy. And his Gligar was the worst. Anyway, Regirock, very cool Pokemon. Don't see it too often, but it got very cool traits. Now, the standard set is Curse. Some people are like HP Rock, but, uh, you know, you already have to EV it to live, Starmie Hydro Pump, and take out of attack. So, I'm stingy with my IVs, as you might have noticed. So, I like Rock Slide. The 
five percent base power boost isn't you know huge but it's you know i'm not going to complain about that either so i think it outweighs the accuracy and pp especially because red rock is supposed to be used offensively it's uh so pp is not really a concern basically red rock is supposed to act like a second metagross with its set of resists it doesn't resist rock but its it, defense is so high that it you know almost does and of course it resists flying and normal while uh, not crumpling to opposing earthquakes so and it's weak to fighting too and steel but it can still take them because it's a monster uh, you can you know toy with it red rock is a fun support move pool like counter and thunder wave and stuff but uh i'm not going to get into those those are not really established then curse set is one thing and then choice band is another what choice band has is superpower which immediately threatens blissey with an oko whereas you know early you know, against Blissey, you don't want to immediately explode and potentially hit a Skarm, but you, with superpower, you threat, and so Blissey knows that and tries to stay in, and you just rock slide and don't do anything, and then they safely switch to Swampert knowing you can't explode on it. But with superpower, you hit Swampert harder than, than Earthquake without having to explode, you Oko Blissey, you smack the hell out of Lax, and you Oko T-Tar. And uh, your explosion is, of course, immediately powerful, so your smacking even resists. So yeah, I think uh, Regirock is really cool. You also can't intimidate it. Uh, on either set because of clear body, so also very Metagross like. So yeah, Red Rock is like a second Metagross. He's extremely cool, extremely underrated. Uh, Alakazam. Oh wait, no, we skipped ahead to, uh, of Camerupt. Camerupt. I mean, I want Camerupt to be good so bad. He does kind of struggle a lot, but he does have his good points. Camerupt's good points are as follows: you have a Will O Wisp immunity with uh, an Electric immunity. And you are neutral to ice and grass. What this means is that you check every Zapdos variant and you switch into every Gengar set. Those are really, really good traits. Now, of course, they're paired with Dugtrio, yada yada, and his camera's not that bulky and it's slow and no recovery. But if you are aggressive and you play it well, then Camerupt can lead you really, really far. Um, so I think it has a lot of potential. It's just. It just struggles, man. So, HP Grass or Ice, depending on what you uh, want to explode on. HP Ice keeping Mence out of your face means that you can actually explode on Swampert. And if you're trying to sweep with a DD Tar, then it's probably easier to do that than try to HP Grass Swampert and uh, be forced to explode on Salamence, which doesn't get you anywhere. So, it's a tough choice. You could Toxic and, you know, have your cake and eat it too, and uh, not have to guess between the two. And if Swampert tries to refresh it off, you just blow it up. And you cripple Mence, so, and you also cripple uh, Flygon, of course, like HPS would, but, uh, yeah, you cripple Suicune nicely without having hit it repeatedly, forced to rest, if it doesn't have rest, that's good, so, uh, yeah, there's that, Toxic is also an option, some people like Quick Claw and Camerupt, it's very feasible, you know, ruin a Dugtrio 20% of the time, or 23, I think, percent is Quick Claw in Gen 3, but, you know, that's, that's a Jirachi Psychic Spadef drop, so, yeah, I'll take it. Um, yeah, so the EVs are kind of random. You can I just wanted to have Swampert's attack stat, but you can also give it some Spadef to eat those Gengar Ice Punches and Zapdos HP Grass is a little better. Speed can vary. I just wanted to outrun Refresh Pert. Um, and by extension, Blissey and like slow T-Tars. You can go a little more. I wouldn't go too much less though, or or you know less at all. But you know some something like this. You know, just give it a nice little even split. Focus on Spadef, not HP. Uh, and yeah, that's camera up for you. So, fit it on offensive teams. The Willow's immunity is really nice. Uh, so yeah, Regirock also fits on offensive teams, if that wasn't clear. Speaking of Pokemon that fit on offensive teams, now while Alakazam could technically fit on a defensive spike team as a cleaner, I think Starmie's generally going to be more suited to that role because it can actually switch into an attack if it needs to, thanks to Natural Cure, so it can switch into like a Will-O-Wisp or... And uh, you could resist fire. Alakazam, though, is like Starmie on steroids. It ties Dugtrio, and it's really strong. Now, the standard set is Calm Mind, Psychic, Fire Punch, Grass. You know, aping Super Rachi. But I really don't like Calm Mind, because I think Alakazam should be played to its strengths, which are immediate Okos on everything, because of its huge special attack stat. So I personally prefer Ice Punch over Calm Mind. Uh, so you can Oko Salamence late game, because it's really, really, really powerful. And, uh, yeah, like, other than that, you just HP Grass the hell out of things. Your special attack is even ahead of Gengar, so your HP Grass is pounding Swampert. Um, even the bulky sets. And, uh, Psychic Drops, you know, Fighters, Gengar, 
Weaken Snorlax, Fire Punch for Steels, Crucial, HP Grass Crucial for T-Tar, and what's its face? Uh, Swampert, of course. And Harder Hit on Suicune, of course. So, yeah, Calm Mind is nice, like, sometimes, but I don't know, I just feel like Ice Punch is more reliable overall. A uh, bigger hit on Zapdos as well, so it can't T-Wave you. So, but Calm Mind is, you know, fine too, I just think Ice Punch is coverage is, you know, the ice coverage is part of what makes Starmie so nasty. Uh, it sucks that you can't fit Thunder Punch on Zam. That would be really nice, you know, really clean up Gyarados and stuff, but Gyarados is, e is easier to check than Ments, so. Yeah, so that's Zam. Uh, Starmie Escalate Game Cleaner on offense, Spikes help. Now this little thing doesn't really fit on teams traditionally. I think it's really good with Spikes, but, you know, it is such a devil that I wanted to show uh, showcase it anyway. So, yeah, I've used it Leech, you have Encore, which is just a ridiculous move. You come in on Earthquake, you're immune to Spikes uh, and uh, Dug Trio Trapping. You're fast as hell with that speed stat. I don't know what the best EVs are. Um, I think Max Spadef is nice just so you can like take a weak HP Ice or something. You don't want to invest in HP so you can create as many substitutes as possible because Leech Seed will be giving you more health. Uh, but yeah, and you're not really taking many physical attacks. So I think it's better to be able to take like a Fire Blast or something from Salamence if need be. But yeah, uh, there. this is Jump Luff. Use it with Spikes. It's devastating. Uh, yeah. Sleep Powder Accuracy sucks, but yeah. Here's Omastar. Omastar is the strongest of the Swift Swimmers. It also has the most crippling weaknesses because it's weak to Earthquake, it's weak to Electric, and it's quad weak to Grass. I mean, you know, the, the weakness doesn't make a difference because it dies... T the level of weakness doesn't make a difference with Electric because it dies to any Thunderbolt anyway. But neither of the other two Swift Swimmers, Ludicolo and Kingdra, have those weaknesses. Uh, the fighting weakness doesn't do it any favors either, I suppose. What it does have is a normal and flying resistance over those two, whereas Ludicolo uh, dies to HP flying from Ments or uh, Arrow. I would say it dies to HP flying from Gara, but Gara walls it, so doesn't really make as much of a difference. Uh, whereas Omastar can set up against them, and like uh, arrow double edge as well, more safely. And if you're using Omastar, you're all in on the power, so you go with Mystic Water, which actually out damages HP Grass against Swamper in rain, has a 25% chance to KO, I believe. Uh, that that might have been just get that might have been just against max HP. I'm not sure if it was against the 44 Spit F, but it was. Uh, you know, check the calc for yourself always, and. It's more powerful than HP Grass, which is all you need to know. For now, and it's the most powerful Swift Swimmer, and it can clean up. It gets spikes, but it doesn't switch in easily enough to make use of them, so I think it's better off just going with coverage, you know, Swift Swimmers. Spikes are nice to, like, put stuff like uh, Snorlax into range, but I wouldn't force it. You know, it's not a bad choice, but, you know, make sure you get them in early, and that can be kind of a challenge with Omastar. Maybe if you run, like, a funky Thief set to steal Strongx's lefties and then lay spikes on it. That actually sounds pretty fun. But yeah, that's almost started. The strongest Swift Swimmer. F then we have uh, Armaldo, the permanent Snorlax wall. Uh, credit to Dexa, because the original set, the Ladder Knight uh, Advanced Community Discord came up with was Harden. Uh, actually, it was Asta's set, I believe. Harden, Seismic Toss, Knock Off, Rest. It has access to Knock Off, and, which is nice. And with uh, Harden, then you stall the hell out of any Curse Lax. And Dexa came up with Mimic, which is better because you just steal its curses, uh, which is, you know, just all fine. And uh, you have just as much PP as Curse, so you don't have to worry about running out. And Mimic also has potentially other nice use, like stealing uh, spikes from Skarmory or something. So, uh, yeah, Knockoff is really nice. Armado also gets Rapid Spin, but it's illegal with Knockoff, which is so sad. It would be so good with those two moves together. So yeah, some people like to try like uh, Swords Dance sets because it's got a great attack stat and Swords Dance and great stabs. Um, you know, the Bug Rock combo is something Heracross often uses, so Swords Dance and with those stabs is pretty nice. Uh, I mean, it's slow, has its problems, but it would be pretty nice uh, if it, those were legal. You know, Rapid Spin isn't too worth on it. I think you gotta use Knock Off and just pair it with Claydol for Spin. So, uh, but yeah, that's what uh, Armaldo does. And unlike Hariyama, it is a knockoff user immune to sand, so. And uh, Seismic Toss provides consistent chip damage on literally everything, so, yeah. Uh, niche Pokemon, but potentially very cool. Finally, we're gonna uh, go with Blaziken, which is, I think, fitting. 
So uh, you can run a fire grass fighting set. The thing Blaziken does over its other fire type, over its fellow fire types, is that its fighting moves against Titar again and uh, Blissey are not focus punch and they are stab. So you threaten them immediately. So you don't need to predict on the switch like Charizard does. So with Blaziken, you sub up and you fire blast and you choose the best move against whatever you hit. You're getting walled by Mence, but Mence doesn't like Fire Blast anyway. So, especially if it's Naive, or minus Spit F, let's say. Or if it's Choice Band and Sand is up and it's losing health. So, it's generally a decent trade-off. And you pr you're protected from uh, Doug, and you sub down into Blaze range, so it's really nice. And uh, Blaziken is very, very powerful. It's got a higher special attack, st it's got a, just barely, but it does have a higher special attack than Charizard. And its speed, its lower speed tier actually means it can afford to run plus special attack pretty much every time. So, uh, finally lead set, this is uh, something, uh, Zamog was coming up with it first to beat Zapdos, Titar, and Metagross, that trio of leads. And his idea was to blaze, fire blast, KO uh, Zapdos. And I figured it would be safer to run Overheat, because early in the game, if you're just Fire Blasting into Salamence or something, and then switching out immediately, then Overheat will do the job better. But, uh, and then you have Charcoal, because the item can kind of be whatever. Uh, but, uh, and you may as well give yourself a boost on those, you know, Sand chipping you down can chip you into Blaze if you're not using Sub, and you get the stronger hit, and you, uh, really destroy Zapdos, and you smack, uh, you really smack Salamence on the switch, and uh, some even something like Suicune, uh, the extra damage can be nice. And you you can run Thunder Punch, but uh, Gyarados is not nearly as big a target. The damage isn't big enough. The damage difference isn't big enough against uh, Suicune, so I think it's just uh, it's better to make Blaziken better at what it's already good at. So that is this set. All right, so that's everything. It only took. Uh, 3 hours 40 minutes, so I did leave off some stuff at the bottom of the viability ranks. The stuff that's just pure junk. I mean, it's not pure junk, but it, I don't see it regularly enough on either ladder or in tournaments. It just hasn't shown itself to have any sort of niche to feel worth talking about. At length, anyway, so... Uh, Miltank, Miltank just kind of blows. It's just kind of a bad normal type. Minjask, past Swords Dance and Speed Boost, and it's devastating, and that's all you really need to know. Uh, Rhydon is kind of like a Marowak with resists to flying and normal, and the ability to hold leftovers. It's uh, got quadruple weaknesses, which is bad, but it's also really strong. It has Rock Stab and uh, Mega Horn over HP Bug, so Rhydon has a nice little niche. And, and, um, and there's Dragonite, which can be like a CB Salamence that can Focus Punch Skarmory, so it doesn't need Magneton. That's its niche. Uh, then there's... Scizor, which has some potential for, you know, uh, Swords Dance, Baton Pass, Salic stuff, and maybe even Reversal. Or, actually, I forget what Cowboy Dance set was, but uh, you can either Swords Dance pass with it, or you can, like, Reversal Sweep with it, like, kind of like a Sandibune Heracross. And, um, because Heracross can run Reversal, but usually doesn't. And uh, then there is Sceptile, who I know has been tested on the ladder recently in the Outbreak of Lantern. And he, uh, he's got good speed, but his power is overwhelming, but he's also got Endeavor and a great speed stat. So, and, you know, good coverage with Dragon Claw alongside Leaf Blade and, you know, Hidden Power and uh, even Thunder Punch, so, for Gyarados. Although I doubt he's going to be using that, but yeah, it has his moments. Articuno just straight up sucks, unfortunately. Quagsire has a niche for being able to resist Rock and be immune to Suicune Surf at the same time. I think the team that used Armaldo was using him as well, so there's some slight potential there. Registeel can be, uh, it doesn't heal like Jirachi does with Wish, but it's got Explosion, and it's just very, very bulky, so there's that. And, uh, you know, it's just general wall stuff. Um, yeah, because these Pokemon that I left off the list, they are not as defined in their sets. Like, Rhydon can run Sub-SD or... Uh, you know, I guess I technically could include Rhydon and Dragonite, but this has been going on for so long already, and I think you get the general gist. Sub, SD, Quake Slide, or Mega Horn over Sub, you really need a lot of Paralysis support with it. Dragonite, HP Flying, EQ, Focus Punch, and then, like, Double Edge. Because it doesn't get, uh, doesn't get, or I guess Brick Break would be fine for, that's actually better, probably. 
And uh, then Scissor, like SD, Baton Pass, HP Bug, Reversal, or like Endure, if you're trying to sweep on your own and not pass out. Uh, so, Articuno, nothing. It just sucks. Um, yeah, Sceptile, Leaf Blade, Dragon Claw, Hidden Power, Fire, probably. And then, like, Endeavor, maybe throw Sub in there. Quagsire, Surf, Protect, Earthquake, pick a filler. It doesn't get recover in Gen 3. So, Registeel, you know, uh, McMegan was using a Curse Boom set, kind of like a second Metagross, so Curse, HP Rock, Earthquake, Boom, that kind of thing. Uh, you can also just go defensive with it, you know, Toxic Protect, Seismic Toss stuff. Uh, slacking is just a normal type Choice Bander. It's uh, Double Edge, EQ, S-Ball, Hyper Beam. You know, the EVs on these are very simplistic. You can very feasibly just go Max Max. Nothing complex needed, really. Um... You know, with Rhydon, you want 101 HP subs if you go that route, but other than that, you can just max-max all these guys. Uh, Dusclops just kind of sucks. It's a spin blocker that is a, that is uh, hit by spikes, and uh, it's very slow, it doesn't heal, it's just very bleh. If your team can handle Gengar, it can probably handle Dusclops, and your team should be able to handle Gengar, so it should be able to handle Dusclops. Uh, sad, but I'm, I'm sure there's some sort of niche on a super hardcore stall team, but I don't think those teams are very good in general, so Dusclops just kind of blows. Tauros is fast and has Intimidate, but man, does he need support. He's fast, Intimidate, pretty strong. EQ, Double Edge, you know, Iron Tail, HP Ghost, decent set, you know, return over Double Edge if you want. But it's pretty strong, pretty fast, but just always comes up short, um, so... Lunatone technically can pass Call Minds while walling physical Salamence, but it's frail and not very good. Swellow is very cool, I've used Swellow in my videos before. Sub, Baton Pass, Endeavor HP Fighting with a Starf Berry, which boosts a random stat to plus two. And, uh, you know, it's fun on uh, Vapakuno's team, and you know, sometimes you just mess around with it. I should really make another team with it, because it's very fun. Executor is just a gimmicky Sun Sweeper. Uh, Entei is, you know, also gimmicky Call Mind or Sun Sweeper thing. Executor just never has enough moves. Um, you know, you want all of Sleep and Solar Beam and Psychic and Hidden Power Fire and Hidden Power Ice and Explosion and it's just, ugh. I'm sure you can make up for it with good team building, but it's tough. Anyway, Entei is fine. You know, you can Call Mind or Sunny Day. It's just, it's, ugh, frail. Definitely the worst of the fires. And then Solar Rock is just like a worse Lunatone. It has a stronger Explosion and it's like a a CB Rock type that can baton pass and not be totally frail and switch into physical Salamence, but just not worth it. So, that's everything. Those are the movesets of Advance OU. If you have any questions at all, find uh, the Discord server in the description below. Drop a comment. Uh, whatever you like. I hope this helped you out. I really do. I hope you go forth and test out these new movesets on the ladder and have fun playing Advance OU. Even if you're an experienced player, I hope listening to this soothed you with the melodious tones of my voice or you uh thought of or i went over a set and you thought hey you know he's right that set is good i should use that on my next team so anyway uh thank you guys so much for watching and i will catch you next time